Okay. Halito, Halito, is that better? Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear me now, beloved? Halito. Hey, you beautiful ones. Okay. Halito, Halito, is that better? Can you guys hear me now? Okay. Okay, good. Okay. Um, I hope everybody's doing well. So today I just wanted to talk a little bit about consanguinity. And that is, hey, I'm so excited to hear from you guys too. Thanks for joining me, guys. How y'all doing? Um, I wanted to talk about the genealogy a little bit. Um, I guess we can never have enough conversations about it. Uh, the reason why I want to go over it again, because um, I, I know how intense it is when you have finally scratched a lie and, you know, you want immediate remedy. I need you guys to understand that you, not everybody's going to find this magical document that says that you are this or that you are that. What you have to understand is the criminal conduct that was uh, uh that, that was committed within the communities that our ancestors lived in, okay? Um, there is not much that can be hidden. You have to penetrate who they are first, and then you can move on to what political things happened that changed, caused their status to change, or may have even caused their um, condition of some sort of peonage. OK, because not everybody was a slave and I need to make sure that that is absolutely clear. But the only way that people are going to be able to understand that is by checking in on their folks. You have to check in on your folks. That's just it. There's no way around it. Everything else is secondary. Once you have established that, you have to make sure that your kids have the same information. So a lot of things, now I was talking to uh, one of my elders and what they explained to me was the way that uh, they were questioned and by the time they got the news, there were so many of them, they didn't have the money to travel into Indian territory, okay? Um, also, they were reluctant to do so specifically um, because of still being obligated by contract to whomever they may have been working for. They still had contracts with people well after emancipation and still were obligated to work for people. Now that debtor's prison slavery shit didn't work anymore. Well, except in Mississippi, um, considering that they have um, not abolished slavery fully in Mississippi until 2000, February of 2013. In fact, sometime this week in February, or maybe last week uh, of 2013, Mississippi actually uh, abolished slavery. So when you know you hear of it, please understand that it is not. Um, <clears throat> you have to factor in a few things. You have to factor in debt. You have to factor in ignorance of uh, the language and not knowing how to effectively communicate. You know, uh, 200 years ago, they did not know that a person meant a company or a corporation or a dead entity. They had no idea anything about SESKV accounts uh, or the Black Plague. They had absolutely no idea of any of these things. So when they came at our ancestors with this shit, you know, us extending really tight hugs and, and, and you know, loving and trusting, this is how they were able to pull the okie doke. OK, so it wasn't just uh, this fucking horrifying story. You know, some people couldn't read. They didn't know what they were signing. It is a plethora of different reasons why these things may have occurred. You want to keep in mind also there were plenty of wars going on everywhere. So you want to pay attention to those wars because those wars are going to list some of your ancestors in the muster rolls before they took on Nam de Gores. OK, before they took on their their uh, doing business as name. OK, I was uh, explaining to someone <clears throat> when they say, why would you call yourself an Indian when uh, Indians are in India? And, you know, uh, it seems like that would make sense. But when you realize that India was not incorporated, Hindustan was not incorporated 
Bharat was not incorporated to do business as India until 1947. So you have to take all of those things into consideration. If you hit a roadblock, and for instance, you have ancestors in Alabama and 1820, you can't find anything past further than 1820 for them in Alabama. My suggestion to you is going to be to check what? Check what would, what was Alabama before 1820? Nothing. It wasn't there. It was either part of Mississippi or it was either a part of, of Georgia or a part of uh, Florida, West Florida. And keep in mind, Florida was two separate states. Florida was West Florida. Okay. And it was adjacent to uh, Mobile, Washington County, Mobile County. So there were plenty of people in those areas. So you have to understand if they were in Indian territory, that could have been a really, really vast area. Now I'm sure these pilgrims know exactly where our folks were because while they were moving everybody out West and trying to remove everybody, they were also letting immigrants come in from Ellis Island. So now that these people are coming from Ellis Island, do you think that there are going to be a lot of Russian men um, that are coming over here and their name is uh, uh, Robert Jones? William Johnson? German people? You know, you, you maybe the French can blend in and perhaps uh, <clears throat> some of the uh, uh, maybe white South Africaners Maybe they can blend in because they have uh, English names or names that are familiar to the English language and they're uh, what they call anglicized. That could be correct. But you can't get these Frenchmen over here and have regular names like that. They don't have those. Those names are unique to who? You don't see anybody over there in Israel named Peter John and, you know, what did, you understand what I'm saying? None of those people have those names. They have different variations. So even uh, the, the names that we happen to acquire are still unique and different. They may have their own version. Different nations may have their own version of, you know, uh, Peter, maybe Petrov or, uh, you know, something else in another, it might be Petrov in Russian but it's still a variation of an American name. You know, Juan is John in Spanish and, and, and you know, um, it may be, it's uh, something else in maybe French. It's Jean in French, but they all still are familiar to the English names, which we are known to have. You don't see Syrians coming over here named Ertheline Jackson, Beulah Washington. I'm trying to come up with some sort of logical reasoning as to why so many of uh, our ancestors named their sons after George Washington, Thomas Jefferson. There has to be some significant reason why they saw fit to name their children after these people. And if we ain't dumb now, we wasn't that dumb before. Okay. Everybody could, you couldn't fool every goddamn body. So why would people take that on? Not everybody could have been in love and ankle grabbing uh, no man that thinks he owns somebody. That's bullshit. You hate and loathe that motherfucker. And the last thing you want to do, and you know there's a 95% a, a chance or whatever percent chance uh, according to, and this is not factual, and this is according to this blanket story, that your baby might be snatched, right? That they, your baby may be taken from you. You're going to give him the name of the motherfucker that took him from you? I don't think that shit makes no fucking sense. You know? This man rapes me and I'm just going to name the son after him. Get the fuck out of here. That don't make no sense. You know, so 
Um, I try to, you know, you got to make, you just got to make sense out of these things. So again, uh, little nuances like that, you, you want to make sure instances like that, you want to make sure that you follow the folks and don't just follow your folks, follow the neighbors. You're going to see uh, at some point, you know, for the last 70 years of some sort of portion of the documents, you'll see the same families living in the same proximity. When one got up and moved from Denver to uh, uh, Alcapulco, the, the same family from next door moved too. You don't think that they were kinfolk? Why would they just, you know? I mean, I happen to be a part of six generation friends, a uh, family, I, I guess you want to call it. My grandmother, friends with her friends down south. And when they all migrated to New York, um, <clears throat> During the uh, prior to the right before the right at the uh, the last Indian Migration Act of 1956, the Relocation Act, when they finally you know made everybody so damn tired. This is the the beginning of the uh, you know the, the heightening of the civil rights movement, 1956, and they're sending everybody to go assimilate and work inside the big cities and find all these jobs and you know live the live a better life get out the South so we can continue stealing from you motherfuckers. Cause now that it had at that point become unlawful for them, you know, to do what they were doing. It didn't stop them. It was always illegal. It was legal for them to do some of these things, but it was always unlawful. But again, when they had the things that they had to worry about and, you know, getting lynched for saying that they were Indian and, you know, perhaps those, those consequences, you know, I'm sure it was going to change up quite a few minds. You know, um, outside of like the wild, wild west, when you had, uh, you know, bands of, of, of different people or what they considered outlaws, you know, those were actually the protectors. Because it's already obvious who the constables were, who the actual slave catchers were. So, um, Again, you want to make sure you pay attention to their migration patterns. If you see them in Virginia and you see them in Indiana and you see them in Ohio and, uh, and then you may see them in Oklahoma, they're more than likely Cherokees. They're, they had Virginia, Ohio used to be a part of the Virginia company. Think of them as the Commonwealth of, as well as the corporation of. So you have your de jour, we the people, Commonwealth, and then you have your de facto, your ass is a slave, you fuck up and the goon's gonna come and get you kind of situation. And unfortunately for Virginians, it was, uh, it was always a, a, a serious concern and so detrimental because of what? You lost your rights and privileges. So it was important for them to make sure that that occurred in some kind of way, one way or another. Whether or not, you know, they were um, uh, unfortunate and, and had to endure some sort of peonage because I really can't see it. What I can see is contracts. Now, there was no foster care system. And if you die, when you die, they still take money from your children because uh, people don't have their affairs and shit together. So there's, 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 when, you, when you see that they would bequeath certain slaves, that means that damn debt wasn't paid off. And if they owe the cartel $20,000 and these slaves owe them four more years and within that four more years, they can make $100,000 off of them. Right now, you got the so-called slaves paying their debt, and they're making sure that the cartel don't come and fuck their family up and take everything off the plantation once this person, you know, passes away. So there was a bunch of various reasons why these things happen, and you gotta understand, they didn't know, and the ones that did know about the straw man, some of them were fortunate enough to be able to travel and to get outside of the U.S. Even why uh, a lot of the British uh, Aborigines were a lot more successful. You got to understand Great Britain uh, abolished slavery in 1808. So there was no more importation of any Africans at all. And then the United States still had a complete 60 plus years uh, to endure those conditions, right? And, and, that, and that, that was just on paper because they still didn't do much to enforce any of the laws and stuff. But that's also due to our people not making, and uh, you know, their, their so-called politicians 
move forward and put that boot on their neck. Because those were the times where they had that momentum and were able to accomplish some of the things that they needed to accomplish. For half the time, these people were scared to death any, any damn way. They were scared to death. So these uprisings, some people wouldn't bequeath, uh, uh, wouldn't manumit their slaves for, unless they moved to Liberia. So they had stipulations like, nope, uh, I'm checking out of here, but you know, I'm not letting... Um, go bond go anywhere until uh he he goes to liberia or he get his ass out of virginia right these are some of the things that people would leave in their will and because you know people assign themselves to these contracts they have endorsed these contracts and put their mark their signature right they put their thumbprint there they were obligated to oblige unfortunately they were obligated you know, to deal with that. So you want to make sure you pay attention to what was this place before it was this, you know, don't let them start talking about no damn uh, Oklahoma and Oklahoma didn't come to the 1900s. Well, you can get back to the 1900s, can't you? The early 1900s, is it a mystery to anybody? Why particularly the 1890s census? Of all censuses, they just burnt up every fucking where. I don't know how much sense that makes. And I bet a dollar to a donut, right, that during that decade is when the most immigrants started to arrive here. And with our people so disadvantaged and not knowing whether or not they were coming or going, there's going to be some shit that they missed because they put their faith into the politicians thinking shit. They helped get us out of the other condition. They must know something, right? Which was okay for a while under the Republican Party. But for some reason, the Democrats and the KKK changed a lot of fucking minds. Psychological warfare. These census records, I'm also always going to wonder, uh, you got to check out some of these documents. And the reason why I tell you to check them out in the eyes of babes, right? Because my daughter and I are looking, uh, we're looking at some, some, I used to do genealogy like all the time professionally. And uh, I was working on a portfolio for a client and my daughter kept noticing that the bees looked like it was created after there was something else. And uh, this was in, um, I want to say it was in North Carolina. I don't recall the county, but I'm telling you, they went, all these people were Indians. And they decided to cross it out and put B. Now, when you look at the name on the, uh, of the, the people that are being enumerated, you'll see a B looking completely different. None of the other Bs look like that. You'll see where they begin to write Portuguese uh, in some, uh, the, the, you know, mostly the uh, Melungeon areas, Tennessee. I don't know why there was a, a lot of Portuguese in the Appalachian Mountains, North Carolina, Tennessee. Uh, and they mixed in with a lot of the Melungeons. And those are your Melungeon people now. And they do have some Aborigine stock in them. And it's a complete admixture because they wouldn't have made so many mistakes on that many uh, amounts of censuses where they had to cross it out because Portuguese wasn't even an option. Wasn't even an option. So, 1810, check the free Negro registries. Check um, the military documents. You want to be able to make sure that you um, don't get caught up in what it is that they programmed you to think. They programmed you to think that they didn't document people. That's a lie. They programmed people to think that you couldn't find, you know, that it becomes really difficult to find uh, the women because their last name changes when in all actuality, if you pay attention to what the actual history is, 
you'll see that the Indian woman was always present. And most of the time she was the one that was free and would in times have to manumit her husband or have him set free by whatever uh, work contracts or indentures she may have had on the side. Just because one was a slave didn't mean the whole family was a slave. That's not correct. That's not correct. So you wanna make sure that um, you look for the women and you follow them through the birth records. And the reason why I say that because some of the men were slaves and you know what they had to do? They had to take on the wife's name because she was the Indian and had the rights to the land. People did that. You'll see in instances where, you know, uh, there were 25 year old brides that were married to 55 year old men and the bride's mother was 48. You know, you know, women had babies young. You'll be able to see where they came from. And sometimes their asses was on the run. Sometimes they had real life situations that a lot of people we know have come across too. They may have had to fuck somebody up. They may have had to put somebody down. Go to another town and change their name. Yeah. Y'all don't think they have real life shit going on where they had to, you know, handle themselves in the same way where unfortunately you see people handle themselves now? Oh yeah, it happened. Oh yeah, it happened. It absolutely happened. You know, we have to um make sure that <clears throat> you pay attention to the brothers and sisters. So if you can't stay on your grandmother's line, go to her brother. Grandma might've had a couple of husbands. So she maybe, maybe you never known her to have a middle name. And all of a sudden when uh, grandma passes away, you see uh, maybe Margaret L. Google, right? And you'd be like, Google. L, what was grandma's middle name? Well, my mother didn't have no middle name. No, she was married first, before. Maybe he died in one of the wars. So she was Margaret Lawson before she married Mr. Google. So that, that middle initial uh, under the missionaries, the Catholic missionaries, you know, they always wanted you to have three names. I don't know why. But that would be the middle initial. And it was usually their first married name. And again, to bastardize the children, what would they do? It didn't matter if they were married, they would bastardize the children by asking the woman what her maiden name was. So this is another way that some of you, you know, uh, the ancestors ended up in peonage. It was against the law to have uh, illegitimate children. You imagine how many women would be locked up right now when they, you know, men still had to pay child support back then. They still had to be responsible for that child. So uh, they had strict laws also in certain Confederate states. If a, a, a so-called master would have a baby with his indentured servant or his slave, First of all, the slaves gonna have, if they were African, they were perpetual for life. So it wasn't really a lot um, that could be done. And then you had the Negro and you had the Indian that initially they was also in servitude and they had to comply with these same laws and, and uh, statutes and codes at this time. They didn't know how to deal with these people. They didn't know how to deal with them. So their kids ended up in jeopardy too. The woman, the indentured servant would get an additional two to five years. The Indian or Negro slave would get more time added on to, and they can be traded and do whatever, you know, they can get more time. The master's gonna get fined. He would get fined a heavy, some shit that he didn't wanna pay, put it that way. And it'd probably be worth more than what, <clears throat> 
you know, than, than what he actually paid for the actual person's debt. They buying debt notes. They got us on the stock market now. Only difference is you worth tons more. You worth more now with currency that isn't really worth nothing. And yet they made our ancestors worth nothing, but the currency was maximum capacity. They had to devalue them for that reason. So it was the civil status. For us, we still, they pretended to have all these equal opportunity uh, opportunities. So for that reason, they had to make it look like we can excel. So they got their Oprah's and their Jay-Z's and you know what I'm saying? You got those people to make you think you got a chance when meanwhile, they're using those same people to fuck you up. All of these people that are the, the, the Native Americans that are saying that we don't exist have existed with us. So if they can't prove that they were next to us, I have no reason to pay them any attention at all. You can't talk that shit if they ain't from the 13 colonies because that's where our folks were. They can't talk that shit if they wasn't in Jamaica and Haiti and Bermuda and any of the, the lower or the Great Antilles. South Central America, what could they talk about? They, you you got to be from, you got to be there to talk about it. Ain't a whole lot I could really tell a Mexican except they used to look like me. That, that's a whole fact. I can tell them that and be confident in that shit, but I don't go into all of that. I don't talk about uh, the old Mexican. Or I don't get into all of that because I can't prove no relationship to none of the motherfuckers. In my mind, I think Mount Rushmore had old Mech faces on it. I do think that because I know how these pilgrims like to, you know, do their own little Edward Scissorhands on things. Right? I get that. But um, I'll... I wouldn't worry about looking for some magic document. I would worry about going back as far as you can and collecting all the data because there's really no way around what has already happened and what was already written. It's not hard to tell who you are. It doesn't matter what you don't see that uh, you look. You think you're looking for. Doesn't matter. Because they know. And you just got to come at them with the truth. I want to read something regarding the five civilized tribes. I don't know how to, this is my uh, first time doing this through Hangouts. So I don't know how to, uh, I want to see if I can switch my screen so you guys can see. And I want to go to um, just read a letter from the five civilized tribes. This is a, uh, let me, I can't think of the lady's name. She was rejected. And the reason why I wanted to see the rejected claim, I understand that she didn't know some of this shit. And the reason why they wanted to move everybody around because they knew when it was inevitable for them to duck and hide anymore and they had to do something. And they also wanted to include and insert themselves within the social construct of being able to make sure that we were secure. So they asked this woman in 1903, they asked her about her parents. The way that they're talking to her is, uh, you know, interrogational, very interrogational. So you bought the bottle of beer at what time? You know, like, um, what's that movie? Menace of Society. Yeah, you bought the bottle of beer at what time? So, you know, you got these people and they, and, and she was in her sixties at this time. I mean, that's not the oldest, you know, but, um, she was kind of confused about some of the things that this man was asking her to interview her in regards to, <clears throat> you know, what questions I guess are imperative that they ask you. And, uh, the lady's name was Martha Shoemate. Okay. And I'm going to drop the link of Martha Shoemate. And I'm going to show you 
it, it, and you're going to have to, you know, deal with it on your own time. But I'll drop the link for Martha Shoemate. And it's five pages long, the interview. And in the interview, the BIA is basically asking her, where were your folks then? And where was your folks? Is They confused the hell out of her, how they questioned her. First of all, let's get that straight. Um, pretty direct questions, but you can tell that the communication, uh, there was completely a disconnect between Mrs. Shoemate and how to prepare for this. But within this, you know, uh, rejection letter, it was very helpful to see where she may have went wrong. So I was going over some of the errors and I did it based off of the nature of the language. And when I say the nature of the language, you know, they're calling her persons and, and asking about residency. And that means a whole bunch of things. When they ask you, where do you live? Okay. They ask you, where do you live? Or what, what's your address? Do you realize on an application address is in capital letters? When you see it in capital letters, that means it is a corporate part of their corporate construct, right? To pull you into their jurisdiction. So if you are a resident, that means that you are doing business commercially, right? In a jurisdiction, and that's where you are going to reside to handle your business. So in most cases, when you move to another country or another state, which is another country, and you have to, you may not know it, it may not have been an issue where you've been arrested for it, but I've certainly been stopped for it in California uh, one time. You had to have turn over your state ID within 10 days of so-called being a residence in California. So when you... <clears throat> say that you are a resident, you're saying that you're doing business in a jurisdiction and basically, you know, it's none of your business. And if you're using their currency, they certainly feel that it is absolutely their business, right? So the only difference is there was something that we had that other people didn't have in the South. And that, my friends, is Confederate money. We had Confederate money. They don't put slaves on the goddamn money. Will you name a nation where they put slaves on the goddamn money? In these same communities where our so-called ancestors were allegedly enslaved. Smiling and shit. Smiling. The baby's looking happy. On the currency. Abraham Lincoln, when that SOB died, that motherfucker had Confederate money in his pocket. He had Confederate money in his pocket. I forget if it was Virginia or uh, the Bank of Mobile or Montgomery. Now, who do you think those banks was backed up by? Where was the gold? The gold was in the South. The gold was in the South. We all had different bands, but for me, I'm really starting to consider that we were under some more simpler umbrellas. There was a bunch of different Choctaw tribes. There was a bunch of different Cherokee tribes. There was a bunch of different Creek tribes. There was a bunch of different Muscogee tribes. And there were also other Indians that had to mix and mingle with other Indians. Do you not think that after all of these wars and where they were taking the uh, Indians from here and sending them to the Caribbean, now that the Caribbean is free, you don't think they was coming back looking for their folks? Now it looks like they own slaves. No, they have their fucking family. They came back home. A lot of them probably had to flee here and run their asses over to Haiti. They had to run on over to the Bahamas somewhere so they can, you know, save up some money so they can come back and do business with these motherfuckers. You can't think that everybody went out like a sucker. That can't be the fucking case. Nope, can't be the case. That can't be the case. And one thing for sure and two things for certain, 
we know where the fuck we were. So if we know where we were, where was the rest of these motherfuckers at? Where were they? They were just comfortable because, you know, <coughs> they probably didn't think that we was going to pay it no mind. <coughs> Everybody fucking with kente cloth and shit. So. But now that the jig is up, you can guarantee better start getting in shape. Because these motherfuckers going to be mad. You seen them down there in Charlottesville. There go your motherfucking African slaves fighting the motherfucking European colonizers. Right? The colonizers. That's all that shit was. Those was your runaway Irish and Scottish motherfuckers down there fighting the colonizers. Great, 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 great grandkids. Hmm. That's when we're supposed to be taking advantage. You see, you got the white on white crime happening right now. This was when we supposed to steal fucking hip hop back. Snatch it back. Fuck steal it. We just taking the bitch back. This is where we're supposed to start taking our industries back. This is where we got to start uh, making sure we make connections with these people that saying what need to be fucking said and not talking all that smooth shit that everybody like to hear. When Isaiah Thomas get up there and he talk that shit in front of a whole bunch of Aboriginal men. And he do that. And he throw himself out there like that. That little subtle thing right there. That shit beat Kaepernick shit. Dragon Kaepernick fucking uh, Arabian Peninsula ass nigga. Kneel down, kneel down. God damn it, the Star Spangled Banner says hireling a slave. Why the fuck you think they took that shit out that song? Why the fuck would you not? Had to bust some ass for that. And these niggas don't even know they motherfucking great, 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 great grandfathers was down with the get down. Feeling sorry for these fucking George Washingtons and all that. Nobody don't know what side they was on. Motherfucking whole families fell apart. Some niggas said, man, kill all these white people. And then there was the ones, you know, that was like, no, I love her. I guarantee you it was one of these motherfucking Negroes that was in love with one of these white bitches. I guarantee you. And I ain't even being funny. I'm keeping it real. They was loving and trusting. Loving and trusting. You know? <laughs> That's the whole fact. That's the whole fact. You got to know uh, somebody like Nat Turner couldn't have been no broke, nigga. His grandmother right there, how all this shit went down, right? Nigga just slaughtered all them people with an axe. You know how motherfucking tired uh, niggas going to be swinging goddamn axes and shit? Do you know how I, I, I cut wood before? That shit it ain't goddamn easy. Nothing easy about cutting no wood. So I don't know what it's like to, you know, uh, uh, Lizzie Borden nobody. I don't know what that shit like to not turn a motherfucker with the tomahawk, but I know that shit got to be a strenuous, tired workout. So if these niggas were slaves on top of picking cotton and doing whatever it is that people have in their mind that they was doing, you think them motherfuckers still was strong enough to be wielding fucking axes to bludgeon multiple fucking people? Shit like that don't make no sense. This nigga had money. He had money. That's Edie Turner's grandson. And I think they taking his name and disguising it as Nat. Because you could even find Dred Scott. And it says Dred Scott was living in Halifax County a bunch of, around a bunch of fucking Indians listed as mulatto. And he's listed as insane. And he's free. So how the fuck did he, what, he got kidnapped and they took his ass out there and then immediately, months after he loses, he gets his ass kicked. He dies. His The, the people that they said owned him don't exist. Not even the white men. Now, it ain't going to be no good reason why you can't find a, a white motherfucker on the census. You can find them. You can find them. Yeah, they full of shit. These census records, the churches, 
The churches, find out what the churches are. Why you think this is why they they converted these motherfuckers to AME churches, right? That's a good indication, you know. First of all, the ones that did that that changed over, because I don't know how many churches are still CME. I don't know how many of them are CME churches. I'm not sure. Um. However, you definitely want to um, check the churches, unfortunately. And I think that really, I think that's what that distraction was with um, Dylan Wolf in South Carolina. That's what I think that, 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 that shit was. So that they can have those people murdered. That church was pretty fucking old. Who knows what they found underneath the floorboard? And that man Pinkney was a senator. Okay. So at any point, Pinkney could have, you know, he very well had the position and he was a pretty ballsy guy because there were several things that a lot of them pilgrims were upset with him about. And 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 I mean uh really altering things for the state of South Carolina. So, you know, in my mind. I would it would uh you know make sense to think that them crackers considered him an uppity nigga, right? So and I, I don't want to do the conspiracy uh theorist shit, but I'm just saying what makes sense because I know what's in these motherfucking churches. And if that was one of the oldest churches, then there was something in there that they wanted. Again, we have a situation where they have everybody, you know, paying attention to squirrels and there's a rabbit riding by on a motorcycle. And we miss that because we looking at the squirrel shit. So we don't, we, we have no idea what was inside <clears throat> of that church or why that particular church was the place and you know how that whole shit went down. We'll probably never get to the bottom of that. And this might, it might not even be that important, you know, but I do know what those churches have inside of them. And don't sleep on the Catholic churches either, because that's where they was giving our, our family names like Mary Francis, Anna Marie and all of that. Right. That's where they, they, they were, you know, making sure that people took on these nom de gores. And these other names, but you look at damn near every slave ad or whatever. Motherfucker, be nine years old, went away, and he got a whole nother last name. Can they, their last names are never the same as the so-called slave master? So how ignorant is it for people to say shit like, "Oh, uh." Uh, you got the slave master name. You know, when these, you know, I don't want shit on them, but when the Bay L's and them start talking that shit, and be like, nah, nah, nah. I don't, I don't subscribe to that because, no, it's not the same. It's not the same. So, and you had to have those names to do business. That's who they enumerated our people as. Don't change your motherfucking name. You ain't got to use it. You could do business as whoever the hell you want to, but don't change that motherfucking name because that's how you're going to find your folks. That's how you find your folks. You want to prove your ass is can folk to them. That's right. So all these years, they got people thinking that their surnames belong to somebody else. No, no, it's not true. It's not true. And you again, people adopted people. Please, you know, there's always gonna be people uh, with different names. Everybody, some people was orphaned, right? Some people were orphaned, and the people next door would take them in and take care of them. You know how many uh, uh, so-called white children our families was taking in? You remember that movie? Oh, shit, I don't want to tell my age, but there was a movie back in the days with um, Steve Martin called The Jerk. Hilarious ass movie. I should probably revisit it. And he's got, I don't know what happened, abandoned, and he's in some, you know, family in Mississippi. 
And right as the day is long, Steve Martin really thought that he was a part of that family. Like you couldn't tell him, you know, you got a whole bunch of chickens in the coop and you got you got a whole bunch of eagles on the nest and one chicken sitting there don't know he a fucking chicken until all the eagles get up and fly. Right? They adopted people. They had their foster care system. We always took in strays. You always had a friend. I know I did. Had a, had one of them friends that ran away or some shit. And I'm, you know, begging, could they stay at my house just so we can assess how safe they was? We ain't play that shit back in the days. We ain't play that shit back in the days. They really took care of each other. They really took care of each other back in the days. It wasn't none of that shit. Oh, I don't know what we're going to do. BCW coming to take such and such. It wasn't none of that. It wasn't no, oh, dang, this happened. And I have to do, no, people didn't mind fucking pitching in. It wasn't no complaints. People didn't mind. They knew what to do. Plus, they was heavily on today Christian shit, you know, and all of that. Don't forget that. They was on they, you know, they, they Bible shit. And that would have been you know, the right thing for them to do. And they really tried to, you know, adhere to those principles and stuff like that, you know? And now, and rightfully so, I'm pretty sure that's what kept their asses alive, right? We could say what we want about them, but we know damn well grandma's players work. I don't care who grandma was playing to. And I'm pretty sure they, they done, you know, crossed over. Everybody done grabbed a cross or two in their life, right? Don't matter if you're an atheist now, motherfucker had a praying mama or a praying grandmother. I don't care what you say, huh? Whether you like that, you know, whole church thing or not, because I particularly can't stand it. I don't subscribe to that shit, but I want to thank my motherfucking grandma on them because I know they asses was praying like a motherfucker for me. I know they was. She had mad children. It was nothing else that a woman could do. There's nothing. Don't make more sense to do that. I can't exactly say that, you know, she wasn't no church going person, but <clears throat> she definitely uh, was on her Catholic shit. You know, she did do that, give up stuff for, uh, I think it was called Lent or something like that. She would do that. That was her thing. I ain't going to lie. They started subscribing to that. You know, they definitely subscribed to that. But they sure didn't force a lot of shit. But, you know, I also think about it, you know, after a certain time, they like to make people like now, look at it now, you know, a lot of us come from these big ass families now. None of these kids got nobody to play with, right? People like, don't they talk about the woman? How your mother be one out of 10 kids or some shit? And now it's to the point where our females will laugh at a girl that got three kids and talk about some other shit. You know what I'm saying? They, they will always talk about they shame women for having children and doing what our bodies were meant to do. When you look on these census records, grandma and grandpa, they couldn't have been slaves having all these motherfucking children. And they gonna, they not going to have, they ain't had no random last names, ain't found a goddamn farm nowhere yet. They ain't no goddamn, what they call them, uh, them fake ass breeding farms, I think they was trying to call them. Get the fuck out of here. Grandma and grandpa was freaks. They was doing that. Motherfuckers married 60 years, got all these goddamn kids. They wasn't doing none of that shit. They was holding on to each other damn tight. And if, if somebody did happen to have other kids, you know, the, the man husband died from smallpox or some shit. They had mad Brady Bunch blended families. Sure did. They had plenty of them. Because they took care of each other. And it don't seem like people, you know, that really they really took that um that shacking up shit without being married shit seriously. They was not playing that shit. They got cohabitation list. And when the father had to get the fuck out the house and he's no, no longer living inside the house, this is in the 1840s. He's a slave, but the mother's free. It'll tell you who his first owner was, if he had another one who he owed time to right now, who the lady by that he had the baby with, he no longer in the household. It's almost like a predecessor for uh, the welfare application where they asking all the questions, who lived with you and this and this and that. Wow. 
where people didn't want to list uh, the men. And sometimes, again, these the niggas was on the run. The same gangster shit motherfuckers do now. You don't think motherfuckers was doing that? I seen one of my grandmother's cousins uh, in the war got kicked out for bringing liquor in the camp. He got 50 fucking lashes, got his back opened up in the military. You know, they would lie and say that, um, you know, and, 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 and say that they were white in order to get them in the military. Because they needed experts. They needed people that knew the terrain and they couldn't have no soft niggas. Couldn't have no soft niggas. I wish they never opened up them damn Planned Parenthoods. We supposed to have a thousand, 10 million more Indians running around here. Everybody getting activated. The ancestors just coding, decoding everybody and activating all of us. Hmm. I know one thing. I know one thing. We got to get to these records. You got to get to these records. You got to get to these records. Don't start flying and chasing. It's Listen, after you get to about six generations, seven generations, it's already 524 people. So know that the next one is going to double. So that's going to be a thousand and some change. Stick with one side first. Start with your mother's mother and go all the way back. Then do your mother's father and go all the way back. Then do your father's mother and go all the way back. Then do your father's father and go all the way back. You do it like that so you don't get confused because they always going to bump heads together because they live together. They have people in common, which is your family. You understand? So you always going to be able to go back to them. You don't got to take, if you're looking for your father in the 1920 census, he going to be there with your mother. So you want to go to your father's parents. Once you get them, you go back. You don't want to keep studying them. Then you fucking make sure you get as much on that there ever from their lifespan as possible. And then you go to their parents. You want to categorize everything. You want to label things, right? You want to make sure that you're looking in other places. When it populates stuff, sometimes at Ancestry.com, motherfuckers will skip right past that shit and click on the goddamn DNA test. Leave that shit alone. Focus on the goddamn records. Where was they at? Sometimes your eyes hurt. You've been staring at this shit. This Michael Fish, funny looking ass, black and white ass documents where you see that they edited. You can see that they erased shit. You know there's stuff on the back of the paper and they never flip the shit over. Cause you know, you know, there's something on the back of the sheet, but you can't, you can't read their notes, right? You stay focused. You look on the next tab. There's categories. Go through them. You can make it just go through that state, but you don't want to limit them because, again, if it was Alabama and all you can see is 1820, and you like, well, where they at in 1810, nigga? Where was Alabama in 1810? It wasn't there. Shit. Mississippi wasn't either. It was, Mississippi was what, 1817 or something like that. 1818. It wasn't long. And the territory uh, from North, from Georgia, Savannah ended up being ceded to some of uh, Alabama, ended up ceding land to secure what was owed to Georgia during that purchase. So stick to those counties, Boston, Massachusetts, which Vermont is going to be a plethora of stuff in Vermont. Vermont was free since, uh, I think, 1776. They ain't play that shit. Wasn't much of that going on anyway. So if a motherfucker still lived in New York and you had to run away to Vermont, that was the option. Or you can run away from to Maine or whatever. But sometimes you gotta wonder what the fuck niggas was running away from. Some of them niggas really was fucked up people. Can't act like <laughs> we don't know some of them. Can't act like we don't know some of those types or never heard of them. That ain't true. They had to be some sort of prison factored into all of this uh, grandiose elaborate blanket shit that they have uh, 
forcefully fed to people, <clears throat> right? And it's really a matter of staying focused. Just stay right there in that time. Don't just keep, all right, you get to 1850, you see that they're free. If you find them before 1860 and backwards, before the emancipation, wonderful. Now when you see them, realize that depending on how old they are, they're going to start off free white people, right? Slaves, or you might see them under others. Then you will see just two options. Uh, three options, I believe, but there's never gonna, there was never an option for Indian until later on. 1850, you only had to, you had to record everybody in the house. Prior to that, you only had to document um, the head of household. So you see three Joneses, three people named Jones or Johnson next to each other. And then uh, as time progresses, you realize they're all different heads of households. And it'll list if they had slaves or not, but you know, they didn't, um, now this is after the Henning statutes changed again also. So this is where they started to document all the Indians as mulatto, black and everything else and Negro. And then the, and, and it was okay for them. They had to have, to have the Indians uh, enslaved and in peonage. Then they changed the laws to where uh, the Indians, it was under certain conditions, whether or not that they would be under peonage uh, for different conditions, not just because they look like the other mother, the, the other motherfuckers, you know. These people were very, very clever. And there, there's, there's a certain science to the way that they have, these things have occurred. And there's a certain science to the remedy that needs to be applied. And when you are going through these records, you want to look at the free registry. You want to look at manumissions. You want to look at their travel patterns because if you don't see them uh, in uh, Montgomery, you go. You might see them in Savannah. So maybe take some of those things out of the search engine. Maybe you have the search engine all filled up like, oh, his name was HD webcam and, and grandma's name was Google Plus and they, this one was 18 feet. Stop putting, trying to look for everything exact because sometimes they couldn't even fucking remember. And they worked so hard if they got separated at any time, then what would happen? They're not going to remember. And now what was this town before ain't the same thing no more. So a lot of the information, it wasn't hard for them to lose it. It wasn't hard for them to lose it. They made it very easy for them. And, um, you know, also keeping them so busy that they, you know, really ain't have a whole bunch of time to kick it on civics and shit. They knew a lot more than we did, but they were very much more attached to the land. Even though uh, their political voice may have been stifled, a great deal, they were still able to apply themselves civically. And I say that they had to know something and they, I believe that they would pretend that they didn't know how to read. And I think that was their advantage, right? For the ones that didn't pass the paper bag test, the advantage was to pretend they couldn't read. Well, I don't know how your family will have this property for 120 years in uh, 1830. They don't already had it 120 years. And none of the motherfuckers couldn't read. Shit don't make no sense. So I think that they were um, did a little pretending of their own. And, you know, another thing, too, what I thought about... You know, we have to um, assign positions to your own tribe, your children. You know, one may be the uh, athletic one that, that knows how to do something with their hands. One may be the... Uh, scientific one that can do the, the herbs and the medicine and 
you know, one may be able to be really good at language and communications and with storming those things. That was another thing that uh, this woman was rejected. Miss Shoemate uh, was rejected. She didn't know the language. Now, it clearly said that her father was half Choctaw uh, and half white. Her mother was full-blooded Indian. And when it said that her mother was full-blooded Indian, uh, they were Choctaw and Negro. Then the man flips it on and he accepted that answer when she gave it to him. Because he get, pretty much gave it to her and she hit him with a yes, sir. Right? Um, later on, he asked her that question and she said, oh, well, she's half Choctaw and half Negro. So then he kind of just hit it with the, yeah, you bought the bottle of beer. What time? Like, you know, and it, again, it goes back to the dialogue and language. Now she had to handwrite. And this is another thing that I know fucked a lot of people up. They didn't have the money to travel to go down there and fill out the application. Niggas ain't had no $5. They ain't have it. And they didn't have the money to get on the train for 12 bucks and be able to eat and be on a long line forever how many days it was that they was out there, all these people applying, right? People just couldn't afford it. So that was evidently clear. And then that didn't even include, you know, where their room and board and their, their food and stuff like that and uh, where they were going to be able to, you know, use the lavatory or anything. That didn't include any of that, right? So, you know, people didn't have the money to get down there. It's not like they had to share in Washington, D.C., where you could go sign up and tell them who you was, like how they put y'all to, you know, I mean, and this is corny, too, because there's so much stuff that we have, and these are the things that our people need, and they don't even fucking know they got it already, right? They don't even know they have it already. And that's what's crazy. That's what's crazy. But you want to... um. You want to make sure you start paying attention to what you, you know, what talents your children have, right? You, you want to make sure uh, you find out what things you can cultivate in them that is going to magnify and 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 put them in a position where they'd be able to excel and master certain things by a certain time at a certain age or, you know, things like that. Something that they enjoy doing already because you can't really make them, you know, do things you want them to do. You gotta, you know, if, if they hate to draw, you can't really just keep buying them a, a fucking easel and some bushes and say, come on, baby, draw me a picture. And they looking at you like, yeah, I want to just, you know, go play outside and shit. I don't want to, you know, do the Picasso thing. Kids tell you, what they're interested in and, you know, what they're not, you know? I tried that shit too before with a uh, guitar. I bought my son a guitar when he was four years old and my brother used to get so mad and be like, yo, stop forcing him to go spend time with that guitar. That nigga ain't Wyclef. He want to play basketball. I used to think that was funny, but, you know, he, was, he wasn't, he wasn't no, you know, Wyclef. Um, back then, he just wasn't interested in the shit, you know? Um, but you got to encourage them to do that. Somebody's going to have to be able to sift through, uh, the documents, you know, be able to share them with your children as you discover. First of all, if you pull out something from 1940, right, that's only 22 years. Uh, uh, that's only 88, that's 88 years ago. That's almost a whole hundred years for, you know, these children. So in their mind, in their mind, they'll be able to, you know, um, see something from back then that just seems so, so, so far back that they'll be like, wow, like, you know, that's your great grandmother. That's your great, they're fascinated by that shit. They're fascinated by that. They're fascinated by that. You could pull up a picture and show them them and they could see that they have somebody knows that they didn't even know existed. Yeah, you look so much like your great grandfather. Oh, you look so much like this. That shit don't change. You look at their military cards for the people that don't have pictures. Don't um feel so bad or the people that don't have, you know, the family members that won't share shit like that. You know, you could find them in phone books. 
You can see where they lived, that where they listed, what their business was. You'd be surprised what some of their occupations were. You'd be surprised, but there's still always going to be something in there to tell you what they was like. Tell you what they was doing. You know, you'll tell uh, if sometimes they went a wall too, so you'll see them in a military prison. Them niggas wasn't trying to hurt their own folks and stuff like that. It wasn't with that shit. Some of them didn't know what they signed up for. They thought they was going to take the money and run. You know, they prepaid these guys. That's why a lot of them didn't get their pensions. You don't think none of these motherfuckers was crooks too? Some of our people was crooks, just like some of our people is crooks right now. They're fucking crooks right now. Always try to, Some people always try to get over. Not all of us, but we can't act like and ignore. We don't know these motherfuckers that always try to take advantage always trying to cheat the system same way motherfuckers get too many food stamps and don't report that job it's the same thing some of these ancestors was doing too and they got fucked up motherfuckers had gambling problems you know this shit started with us i know and i don't even know how but i know me and my cousin was rolling fucking dice when i was five six and seven i know how to play spades at eight years old i was a master by 12. Stickball, baseball, all these sports and shit like that. This shit, what? It's already was in us. How creative was we before we had Atari and shit? I remember us playing kick the can and uh, red light, green light, double dutch. Totally American. Totally American. If all these motherfucking people brought all this shit over here and why they don't do it now they left they bought their ancient traditions and left with ours is that what happened yeah exactly playing tonk and shit like that go fish Audi clear war we was playing craps i knew what snake eyes was They always had gambling holes. Our people ran fucking numbers in uh, the 20s, 10s, 20s, and 30s. Who you think started the lotto? The Indians, us. We started this shit. Three card Molly. Come on now. A lot of creature comforts people got right now. They can't thank us enough for. They can't get enough of it. You know, it's the shit we was doing. It's the shit we was doing. How we was able to make up them games. And we just knew it. You want to know what else I find funny? And don't laugh at me, y'all. Let me tell y'all something how fucking deep this shit go. This shit goes so deep that how did me growing up in new york not knowing not near one of y'all when my first friend died how did me and my friends know to pour out liquor we ain't never seen our grandparents do no shit like that how the fuck was y'all in california doing the same thing how was we doing the same shit all over the place all over this country how was we all on the same accord that way if this was just one big you know one big whole struggle this was our culture that's the shit that we did who the fuck jumped double dutch better than we do little shit like that so imagine all the other contributions that we made that we don't even tie to ourselves all this shit these people say oh that started in africa Bitch, y'all don't do it now. What happened? Y'all ain't never lost nothing. How they lose it? It's a lie. It can't be true. It can't be true. I just I just don't really think that a lot of that shit makes sense. If y'all was doing it and it's so ancient, something these other motherfuckers was doing, they'd still be doing it. But it's not them. It's currently us, and it probably always was.
it probably always was. Got everybody chasing around for culture, chasing around. What was we doing? Ancient, ancient motherfuckers. We was getting it crunk. So we could open up the gates for these motherfucking visitors with this wild ass house party we threw and we ain't kick these motherfuckers out the house yet. They just did up. This shit turned into some, you know, Project X hangover type night. And they done fucked our shit up and we just got to clean up before mama get home. So we don't get our ass whipped no more. We already know we got it coming because somebody going to let it be known that we fucked up. Got to atone for that. We tell mama the truth and look her straight in the eye, look her straight in the face and shit. You know, give her give a look her straight in the face with your chest out and your shoulders back. You know what I'm saying? Like you got some, some dignity about yourself. Like she did something right with you. You know what I mean? Look in the eye and let her know you won't do the shit again. And get your ass whipped. That don't mean you tell us some sweet shit. She not going to bust your ass, but take that long. But y'all going to move on, right? Y'all can move on from that. Because now she going to show you more love because you kept it real with her. We keep embarrassing her in front of these other motherfucking folks. Going to get the fucking, you know, going to get those side eyes. We like the bad kids in the supermarket. We always looking at everybody, these farming the kids in them supermarkets or these stores going crazy. But that's how we look to the world by disrespecting our mother. That's how we look. That's how we look, disrespecting our mothers. We could talk about all this shit and gossip about all this fine little shit, but that's how we look to the rest of the fucking world. So, yeah. Oh, they should know and make us all look bad. Well, unfortunately, until we start weeding them motherfuckers out and detaching ourselves from them people with that type of behavior and that type of mentality of statelessness and you know, just, just fucking all over the goddamn place with it, fucking up the whole shit that, you know, we supposed to be having, you know, they either here to help or they here to fuck shit up, you know, you know, they either going to help or they're going to fuck shit up. And unfortunately, it ain't a whole bunch we could do about the ones that want to fuck shit up, except Stay away from the motherfuckers. Minimize how much time we deal with them bitches. You know? Minimize that shit. Got to get away from them because they, they soul snatchers. And we the soul people. Don't nobody do it like us. And we need to stop fucking pretending. That some of this shit, we don't even need it back. We're the most creative people on the planet. We'll make more. We'll make more and we'll do it better. We just won't give it away this fucking time. It ain't up for sharing. Ain't no goddamn collaborations. No contributions on this song. We're going to do this like a fucking J. Cole CD. No goddamn features. No features. Can't trust nobody right now. We got to do exercises and shit like that. I'm so serious. We need fucking healing from our trauma and shit. We need to be able to do the trust system where a motherfucker just fall and you know I'm going to catch your ass. It's clumsy. I'm going to tell y'all now, Phoenix clumsy like a motherfucker and my kids is too. I drop shit and I trip over my own feet. <laughs> yeah, I do that sometimes, right? But nah, we got to be able to catch each other, man. Got to be able to be there for each other. Because in my house, it's, it's kind of comfortable. Like, I could leave my, my shit laying down, my jewelry on the dresser, wherever my money right there, and it's going to be there when I wake up. Like, if I leave, it's, I come back, it's going to be there too. Right? We got to be able to be cool with each other, be well with each other. You know what I'm saying? And get rid of the fucking scrubs. You can't keep making no scrub, no, no, no real nigga. You're not going to be able to do it. And you wasting time being foolish thinking that you can't. Fuck that. Fuck Craig and them. Go chill out with grandma. See if she need her grass cut. Somebody take out the garbage. Go take out the garbage for your auntie and shit. 
She getting too old to be walking up and down the fucking stairs. Go see how she doing. Go check in on somebody. Right? They still got house phones and shit. Go see what's up in that basement. Go get a rotary phone out of auntie basement and show it to your child and see if they can make a fucking phone call and laugh your ass off when they don't know what the fuck to do. Right? Show your kids the old school fucking cordless phone, the big brick shit. Right? Some of those oldies and stuff. They don't know what the fuck cassettes are. They don't know what cassettes are. They have no clue of a life before a lot of shit. They don't know what a vinyl is, what a 12 inch is, what the little donut piece that your ass better not move. That's not that long ago. It's gonna be lost. It's gonna be lost. That's our culture. They put all that shit together off of our music. Our parents was listening to eight tracks, Motown, Michael Jackson, all that. Our folks had that, right? That shit kept our fucking families happy, kept them dancing, made sure we we knew how to be light on our feet. Where do you think we get that fucking rhythm from? Hmm. Hmm. That's our shit. All this shit we put out. Everybody else capitalized on. And we were so happy to share our shit that all these motherfuckers got rich and drove away in that bands. Wouldn't even give you a conversation no more. There's nothing else to talk about. And gave it all away. Gave it all away. We ain't saved none for ourselves. We send our money right out the hood. You know, they started doing psychological tests to see how they was going to get us to spend our money. They knew we had it. They put little tests and shit together. You know how much money the motherfuckers put together? The last Umar Johnson school was the motherfucker was Black Star Line. <laughs> Yo, you see how much fucking it really worked. So thank God that, you know, kudos, kudos that that Umar ain't get that motherfucking school. We probably would have been having a school like Oprah where the little boys is getting sodomized and fucking crazy fuckboy shit, right? You probably open up a school and send them in the fucking Africa that anybody asked where that goddamn campus was going to be. You have one of satellite in fucking Nigeria right on the border of Libya somewhere. Man, fuck these people. Fuck these people. Fuck these people. Marcus Garvey, the motherfuckers gave that man mad bread. He couldn't get one nigga from the island to go with him to New York. How the fuck he get five million Indians to want to go to fucking uh, Liberia? Why? Because it was a fucking investment that the U.S. made. They probably still owe Great Britain for that. This is why we working for these niggas. We still got debts from 200 years old we don't even know we responsible for. Set us free, my ass. These niggas, these wars, they cause who you think pay. You get up and you go and you observe their, you know, they observe your energy and you strike a current. You create a current and they use you for currency. You are human capital. Human resources. Human resources. That motherfucker, that fucking Omar, that motherfucker's a psychologist. You don't know what the fuck that nigga put in these little boys' minds. Can't trust no nigga like that. He called himself all this other shit, and you getting caught with cheap ass strippers, nigga. He ain't fucking with no. Uh, it's just something about that And I really didn't care about the strippers Because I don't give a fuck about him But it's just a certain way a motherfucker should carry himself But you can't even really say that Because Bill Cosby been married for almost 75 fucking years And he still was a fucking little fuck boy You know 
You just got to get back to being natural. You can get back to being natural. Once your mind is at ease, where you can stop fucking searching. Your ass is all ready to fuck home. You know? Got to be able to get past the shit they be talking about. So you can know what you talking about. Because they'll tell you whatever they think, you know, anything. And people want to be told what to do. They want to be told these stories and shit. You know what I mean? So it ain't hard for them to make some shit up. You know, motherfuckers, they've been satisfied with a lot of shit. They ain't going to say nothing. They, they can start a whole new name that they want to call motherfuckers in the next 40 years. Niggas think they got a problem with African-American. Oh, what if they make up a whole nother term? Is the people going to be silent? They ain't going to say shit? Or the people going to act like persons instead of we the people? Instead of we the people. Got to get this shit right, y'all. Got to get this shit right. Because <clears throat> what's going to happen is they're going to fucking do the team takeover all over again. And it ain't even going to be the crackers. It's going to be the Chinese. And it's going to be them people from Hindustan. It's going to be them people from Hindustan. That's what you're going to have, the other super races, so-called super races. It's going to be them. You don't see how many of them coming the fuck over here. And why the fuck do all the Punjabs and, and shit own all the hotels and motels? What was that about? I, I understand that they always been fighting, right, to, do, to have the free white status. But because they're Caucasian, they had to do a trans caucus. This is why they had to petition to become a part of uh um, Asia and not Africa. You got to look at why they broke these continents down because it was really only four pillars. And now you have seven. So it's kind of, I don't know, it's, you know, these uh, census people made some serious fucking mistakes. You know, they made some serious fucking mistakes. And those are the things that we can hold them accountable for. You know, these motherfuckers want to get into all this other shit that ain't got nothing to do with nothing. It ain't about a beef stick. Leave that shit the fuck alone. You know what I'm saying? Leave it alone. You want to leave it alone. Ain't going to bring you no fruit. Leave it alone. Leave the shit alone. This way... You know how to stay focused. And it's going to take you a very long time before you were able to, you know, start penetrating the bulk of these records. You know, it's going to take a while, but don't give up. Don't feel like you are stuck. If you can't get over, get, get to one person, get off of that person. Go to, um, Go to uh, uh, one of the your, your great great one of your grandmothers or grandfather's siblings. The men are really not too too hard to find, and for reasons of you know them adopting, um, you know keeping their last name for the most part. But in some cases, don't be fooled because sometimes, like I said, they took on the woman's name. Absolutely, they did. Absolutely, they did. Especially uh, if, in fact, uh, if there is some sort of uh, admixture of being relative to any African people. And that would also satisfy them being able to stay here in this country. Keep that shit in mind, too. They still had immigration laws. So sometimes that would be the situation or it definitely could be. And sometimes they also you think uh, differently because they would have a, a different name. You know, his name may be James, but they might call him Jack. They might call him Big Will. Everybody got, you know, we got nicknames and shit. You remember they called uh, one of your uncles Goonie? 
Don't be surprised you see Goonie on the goddamn record, even though his name was Earl. Sometimes you'll see that. Then there's a lot of things. There are a lot of names that have been anglicized that absolutely are indicative of being indigenous names. For instance, the name Anna is very, very popular. John, certain names are really popular and that's what they would name them after their uncles, their grandfathers, their dads, all that shit. All that, you know? So check these free colored registries out. And why I say check them out, because you'll find that these, um, you know, so-called, a lot of these so-called recognized Indians, your people is on the same records as them. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Your people is on the same records as them, right? And a lot of people wouldn't even know it for the simple fact that they're not fucking looking for their folks. Understand that. And they may not even be your fucking kin folks. But now that you have the records, you can level the motherfucking playing field. And why I say you can level the playing field? Because now they got to prove their kin to who? You. Now. Let them state their motherfucking business. Let them state their business. They already had you thinking you was from somewhere else. So now pull a rug from underneath them motherfuckers. Slam that fucking tomahawk down with the goddamn facts, right? Because it's going to be 40 million Negroes. The reason why they motherfucking disappeared is because they think they from somewhere the fuck else. That would be the only reason. That'd be the only reason. So, you know, yeah, they don't keep them hotels clean. They sure don't, you know. But again, you want to make sure if you see, I'm gonna tell you something. Now, this is this is another thing. When you see that these uh, states were created, check out what their laws were. If you enumerated in Alabama and South Carolina, and if you enumerated in the South as mulatto, your ass is Indian. Okay. Your ass is Indian. Yo ass is in here. You figure out what state you was in and see what their laws were. They all had, uh, they all had laws uh, regarding race because they had to do this, uh, you know, one quarter this and one quarter that. If your dad was half Cherokee and half Negro, that's still a motherfucking Indian. Right? Still half Negro, half Indian. Still a fucking whole Indian. <laughs> it's a whole fucking Indian. Um... Check these, uh, the Civil War musters. Check these military regiments. Check the prisons. Check the court records, the county court records. See if the county seat, uh, the county was once one part of this county and then when it turned into this, it was ended up being here. Like, uh, uh, I think it was Washington County or maybe, yeah, Washington County, like West Virginia when they incorporated that. Um, Tennessee, I think it was, no, I think it's Tennessee. That's Washington County. But you want to see when it was incorporated, check those courthouses, check those courthouses, you know, check those courthouses. That's where the information is. A Negro is an Indian. Absolutely. A Negro and an Indian is one and the same. 
The only distinction is from uh, a different part of the Americas. You know, that's the only distinction. If uh, an Indian here goes to Haiti, he's going to be a Negro over there because the Haitian's the Indian. The Taino, the Arawak is the Indian there. Same thing when they come here. Yeah. So the Civil War musters look up all the wars. The wars of 1812. That's you know, war 1812 was really fucking fishy. The war of 1812 was really fucking fishy because the French and Indian War. Because now you know who the players were. And that was more of a Algonquin Confederacy thing. However, there was a lot of the Southern ancestors there that was involved. <clears throat> and when you see that they're involved, you see that they're involved with kinfolk. So the migrations, and I find this shit hilarious, so I'm gonna just keep it this well. It's so real, you're traveling in the places that your ancestors used to be all the time, even the places that you think are new places. Oh, I've never been to Texas. Well, when your ass get to Texas, and uh, the reason why you attracted to Texas, because you have folks from Texas. There's something there. Something there. Our people move around. Oh, yeah. How do I do that? You're going to get on X? Absolutely. Join me. Join me. Let me see. Hold on one second. One moment. So... see you know but like i was saying you know you gotta <clears throat> make it interesting for yourself don't just feel like uh you know this is just gonna be something that you gotta have you know by next week and oh it's not so instantaneous and you know shit like that it's not it's not that's not really how it goes, you know? That's not how it goes. You wanna make sure that you are able to, um, okay, uh, let me see, how do I do that, dude? How do I do that, bro? Huh? Let me see. Give me guys a second. I'm going to get X on the panel. I'm going to get X up there. <clears throat> One moment. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out how I get you there. Oh, okay. I heard you. I heard you. Let me see. Oh, got it. Copy, copy, copy. Okay. Got it. Un momento, beloveds. Let me get the good brother on here. One moment. Let me get this. Um. Okay, here it is. I got to ask. I plan to do it by your email. There you go.
Okay, beloveds, we got Dark Man coming through. Got Dark Man coming through. Ready when you are, beloved. So, again, even in um, <clears throat> our Caribbean family, y'all definitely want to get as much details as you can. Reason being, reason being, they are really trying to <sighs> take your cornbread, you know, and that is... That's not that's not how it's gotta go down. Doesn't have to be that way. But um we gonna have to seriously, you know, figure out how to change a few things. Um, I don't think that uh, you know, I don't think they're gonna appreciate it. I'm pretty sure they're not. I sent it, I sent it, I sent the invite X. You know, um, sorry guys, like I was saying, you want to make sure that you are in position. Uh, they just had that article in the Jamaica Observer regarding um, the, the people that are alive have the exact same uh, DNA as the ancient Tainos and Arawaks. So if that is in fact the case, then where does that leave the rosters, you know, uh, in terms of, <clears throat> you know, their stance, you know, I don't know how they're going to feel about that. And, and, I, and to be honest with you, I bet there's going to be a lot of people that absolutely are um, gonna not be okay with that. That's just gonna bother the fuck out of them. It's gonna bother the fuck out of them. And in which case, that's gonna slow up progress for, you know, a lot of other people. It's gonna slow up things, especially over there. And the reason why it's so important is because look at, the oil, the gold, look at the wealth that they give away still. You think they stole 400 fucking years? Look at, look at what they still trying to get. This is what they still trying to steal from us. Still. Who is over there raping uh, at anywhere else? They're not over there trying to steal nothing China got, trying to steal nothing Russia got. They don't give a fuck about nothing nobody else got. They only care about what they want. They only care about what they want. And it's only certain things they want. And the things that they want the most just happen to be in North, South, Central America, and the fucking Caribbean. And I, the irony of that, oh, they still this and still that. And oh, they want to give all of this to, they're doing this to Africa. They're doing that. Oh, well, really? Who's doing that? They selling their own shit. They selling their own shit. They was over there fucking killing the elephants and shit, selling the fucking ivory and all that. And then when fucking Leopold came, them motherfuckers ain't do shit. Ain't no way Leopold was supposed to be able to exterminate all the motherfuckers. You gotta be motherfucking joshing me. That was Belgium. They ain't suing Belgium. They don't give a fuck about their own situations. So to my rosters, why would y'all worry about their situation? They don't give a fuck worry about, about their own situations. You know? So to my rosters, why would y'all worry about their situation? 
give a fuck worry about, about, about their own situations. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. You ex, you there, ex? Yeah. Are you there, Bilal? Yeah, I'm okay, here. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, let me, let me cut back on the that. feedback. I think I got a feedback on my end. Hold on. Because I'm on family search, right? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah. Are you there, Bilal? Yeah, I'm okay, here. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. It's a slight delay. Yeah, mine is on mute, so mine isn't gonna say anything. All right, but I, I, I'm on um family search right now, and yeah, I pulled up 580 pages just for my great grandmother alone. Right, so this shit is crazy. So so far, I I pulled up um a a list. In from one of the churches from back home. And I had to go through the British archival records to get this. So for mm-hmm. a lot of folks who are, who are in the islands and you can't find certain things on the on the website in the islands, you, you're gonna have to go through the British archival records. When you go to a family search, just go on the family search um, icon and type in whatever you wanna type in. And it will give you the options to also go through the British archival records as well. and. Yeah, I'm pulling up a lot of shit going back to 1640, 1664 right now. So this shit is crazy. Like, and this is just gonna need um her um her last name. I didn't even pull up her middle name yet. To even go down from there, cause that's another that's another thing to open up. And this one is for my um my mother, for my mother's side of her family. I didn't even touch, well, I touched my father's side briefly the other day. Um, but yeah, I touched um, my grandmother's um, grandfather, great-grandfather that I fought in the Civil War, but I never really looked into her mother until now. When I heard you talking, I was like, you know what, let me look into this. And I already seen 30 names that I recognize on the on the first page that I know for a fact, I know personally right now, still know them that's in relation so this shit is this is oh my goodness i'm blown away right now so i'm I'm just downloading pdfs and all that shit but yeah yeah it's, it's it's important and britain kept pretty meticulous records they kept really really meticulous records um very interesting very interesting. Spain kept very meticulous records. So if you were able to go back to the 1600s, you go back to Spain because a lot of Jamaica was uh, the Spanish colony and they'll have records too. Yeah, that's true. So that's the next um the next step then for me because I wasn't even thinking about that until just now when you just when you just mentioned that just now. So yeah. That's right. That's right. Right. <laughs> Useful. Um, yeah. That they were enumerated also, even a lot farther back. Yeah, the most definitely, most definitely. Um, you do you, you feel like opening a can of worms right now? Uh, I feel like opening a can of worms right now, because um, um. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like I feel like I'm stirring up some shit a little bit because I want I want folks to see exactly how deep this is because you know we speak of gentrification and we're speaking of all these things happening and I just want folks to see that this has been a plan through between all those folks that they all know that they come from the eastern hemisphere down to even these little mexicans that we see right here today and mm-hmm. that it, I, I wasn't going to do it but fuck it uh, let's just do it it go it's going back to um the one of the old masonic lodges called the um the the um the order of the eagles something like that the order of the eagles you know this is why some people are fascinated with naming everything after eagle as well because they're they're in cahoots with a lot of these um other countries out over there in serbia um the middle east um the dark side of what they call africa um, Asia, and that links back to the Catholic Church. That um, that 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 cross that y'all think looks like the Knights of the Templar cross, as well. So they have a cross for each um 
of the four corners of the earth that they have um, recently conquered and colonized now. So that whole thing that you see with the, when they put the four finger salute up and it's raised at a certain degree at, a, at an angle towards the, um, the flag, that represents um, um, the eagle. You understand? So that's the that it really represents the eagle, and they say raise the flag high so the flag can fly high. That's because the eagle fly high. When they do also the salute, how they bend their arm and stuff, it, it it goes in representation to the eagle, whichever national bird that they claim in their country. You know, the Germanies, the Germans claim the vulture, right? Um, folks here in America, they claim the eagle. Um, I think Egypt claims the the hawk. Uh, and 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 that's how it goes. And they're they're part of the old, one of the oldest Masonic orders here in America. That's called um the Order of the Eagles. And I think they originated in Philadelphia, up in Pittsburgh. You know, so this goes back real deep, um, folks. So when you see that Nazi salute, and you see the Chinese also wearing the um the swastika armband and doing the nazi salute that's what they're part of they're part of that um one of those old masonic orders you see what i'm saying so they all came up with the plan to formulate a plan to make sure that they put each other in positions of power and dominance over the american aborigines so when you hear them when you when you were digging in your history and they're trying to divert you from it or trying to still tell you that you are not th these people or you are not this they're all lying they know what it is so they just came together to take away what's yours. Like right now, I spoke on the gentrification going on in Jersey. The the whole plan of the of the Ashkenazi and the Kizarian Jew is to put their um Mexican cousins and stuff in um prime positions. You see what I'm saying? Because then the the fastest building community right now, other than the Asian community, is the Mexican community. So if the China when the Chinese are coming out of power, they're going to pass it on down to the Mexicans and the Hindus, like the sister was saying. Um, before so you guys just have to open your eyes and realize and understand what's going on the kkk is a part of the order of the eagles you see what i'm saying and they're not even the oldest because it goes back yeah y'all gotta uh, also question this you know the knights of columbus they literally got a secret society named after columbus the knights of columbus why is that you know what i mean and that goes back to um the hidden hand of masonry because columbus kept the secrets he was part of the hidden hand napoleon was a part of the hidden hand. Mozart was a part of the hidden hand. You understand? Um, uh, uh, I forgot his name. Damn. There's another one that's a part of the hidden hand. A lot of these folks are part of the hidden hand. And the reason why also that they came into this knowledge was by the way of um our Moorish br um, brothers and sisters. You see what I'm saying? The Moors. They came by the way of, uh, of this information of how um to come together and unite underneath that Masonic science to conquer us. And the Moors are also a part of um, that society as well, which is why you see folks like T.D. T. Jakes and them be up there in the Vatican taking pictures with the Pope and shit. These Negroes are all in on this shit and the whole plot, these Negroes are Africans in disguise, all of them. The Mexicans, you can't separate them. Those Mexicans is Africans. Those um, Chinese, they're Africans. Those Koreans, they're Africans. Those Japs, they're Africans. You understand the um the the those those Ashkenazis Khazars they're Africans the Moors they're Africans and what it is is this you got to understand this is the plush land this is the land of milk and honey this is the land that has everything this is the land that only has one desert you understand everything else is green forestry so they come from a, a place that don't have shit they have precious minerals but how true is it was it even being related back to us that they have all those precious minerals because we have most most of uh, some of the the fruit trees and stuff that they have they got from here they got the seeds from here because remember that we used to go over there we we went over there so a lot of those statues that y'all think are phoenician statues and stuff like that that's our people when they're speaking of also Bess and Pata, remember Bess and Pata were pygmies you know what a pygmy is a pygmy don't go past your knee we had pygmies over here. The Congos aren't pygmies. They're just short people. You know what I mean? There's a difference between short people and little people. You understand? Big difference. Little people don't go past two, three foot, three and a half foot. Short people be 4'11", 5 foot, 5'5", five, 5'6", five, five, so on and so. You understand? That's people who are short.
Those are the folks in the Congo. So when they speak of Besambata, they speak of pygmies. What is, where is the oldest form of the pygmy or the, the depiction of Besambata? It's right here in the Americas, in the empires of the Americas. So they know. So we went out there and we taught all those um, melanated folks because at the time when we were teaching, Caucasians did not exist yet when we taught them. This is why they have those statues of, of us over there, over in, Ke in, in Kemet, go throughout um, uh, um, the Congos and certain areas. This is why they still have, they had the swastikas and stuff tapered on their backs. That's what the Germans figured out. That's why the Germans was like, hey, what are we doing over here? We got to get over there in America. And this is why you see Nazis in the White House right now to this very day. This is why Hitler was um, chilling in Camp David when everybody thought thought that the real Hitler died in Germany, but he did. That, that was part. his devil. That yes. part. He ended up retiring in uh, Argentina. Yep. He just was the FBI briefs, I think like last year or maybe the year before last, he just retired. Uh, he retired and died ultimately in South America. His best friend ended up Right hand man ended up being uh, the first CIA agent. Reinhard Gellin ended yep. up being the first uh, CIA agent here. True. Counter Central Intelligence. You know, in my mind, that really uh, used to be counterintelligence, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they renamed it and incorporated everything. Well, once they, you know, they had to start doing business as. This is why all of the conquerors and colonizers came as companies, right? Yep. The British Royal Company, uh, the Royal African Company, the East India Company, the West India Company, the Sierra Leone Company, and they were all owned by the same fucking people. Exactly, exactly. And you know, it's cause we gotta understand like this, this, this is the coalition that I'm, that I'm speaking of. This is the whole, cracking of the the whole code of what's going on the whole cracking of the code is if they if they can't j change our genetics they're going to kill us off that's what i did after the show um this morning with um a conscious one i did not sleep because when i i'm still i was still reading the information that i got about brazil and to see what they're doing to them oh every 25 minutes they kill one of us over there so what you what you when they talk about gangsters and and drug dealers in Brazil, when you cut off their way of living, they have no choice but to turn to the drugs to sell the drugs, right? And they use that drug money to buy ammunition, guns. Why do you think they have so much guns? They're at war with the Brazilian government because the Brazilian government is killing them. They're at war. They know this. You have some ignorant ones that's killing each other. Yes. But for the most part, they're at war with the Brazilian government. Why do you think they're trying to kill off so much of the of our brothers and sisters down there? Because Brazil went from being 95 to 90, 95 percent uh, on what they call Negro to now it's 85 percent Negro. You see what's going on? Brazil is sitting on on one of the world's biggest gold mines. Brazil. Brazil, the rainforest of Brazil is where our fresh water comes from. And then Jamaica holds all the channels that disperse all that throughout the Americas because it runs down into Jamaica and Jamaica has all the key ports on the water ports and channels where all of that disperse. All the natural gas also. We ain't even talking about the oil that they're trying to dig up. We're talking about something else other than that. That's right there. So these folks have come together. You got Mexicans and where one goes, the other follows. And I, I, I need y'all to see that. If y'all got an Arab spot right here, the um little Mexico ain't too far away. Then you see Chinatown ain't too far away. Then you see them Italians that their stuff ain't too far away. Yeah. Better understand that. Talk about it. You write right. about that shit. Like I, it's a, I need y'all to really understand what's really going on. So while we got these cornball ass Negroes within our community, literally playing Russian roulette with our lives, that's what they're doing. You see what I'm saying? They literally trying to teach you to keep your mind over in Africa. Africa don't got shit for you. Africa will never have shit for you because Africa still get their shit from here. That's the big secret that people's ain't telling y'all about. You understand? Africa still get their shit from here. And that's the fact. See, these dudes' job are, these dudes are agents. You see when, all right, let's go back to even the Hebrew Israelites that's in Jamaica right now trying to preach that nonsense bullshit down there. They've been down there for 70 years as a seed 
waiting to blossom. This is what they do. They know, they estimated the amount of time that it's going to take for us to wake up because they're going off of our ancestors' calendar. We are not. And because we are not, we will always be a step behind, right? And because we aren't united on a, on a, on a, on a massive front, we, we will be two steps behind. So they already know where well, we're going to put our pawns here and here. And I see, I see um, what we call American Hebrew Israelites going down and is in there in Jamaica right now, converting the people into being Hebrew Israelites. And the form of the of, of, of Hebrew Israelite um, teachings that they're teaching them is the batshit backwards version. It's still another um, Jesus worship a man on a cross that 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 one man never literally existed. It's a metaphor. You understand? And then if you really want to get into it, then it's a it's really a story of multiple different men that they turned into one um entity in the in in their books. So this is what folks ain't understanding. Like, and it's these Pan Africans and these RBGs that's going down there and doing this because what happens? Those Arabs that they call Syrians pay them to go down there and do this, right? And then the money that they're going to be sucking back out of the community because yeah, they're going to be donating to that to that cause. It's going right back into the Arab's pocket. Now, where the Masonic ties also lies within this is Vice Cartel is a Mason, Alkaline is a Mason, or uh, um Tommy Lee is a Mason, Muta Baruka is a Mason. All these dudes are Masons, and what their job was to do was to introduce to you the Arab so you could get comfortable with the Arab. Thus, Vibes Cartel introduced the producer Russian, right? And then got more deeper and deeper into his skin bleaching. Oh, oh. so y'all not understanding yeah. what's really happening here. This is how they use the music and the media on y'all. This is a big plot to take away y'all shit. Now. The Prime Minister, Andrew Holness, just announced that Jamaica might be a U.S. territory. Do you know what that means for, for Jamaica? They can't touch or dig for any oil until the U.S. has um, claim on Jamaica. So Jamaica is going to be a U.S. territory, not the island, but the people. This is why they're forcing y'all to take that national ID, because that national ID also marks you as a corporation. It puts you as a straw man. So when you are put as a straw man, who owns the copyrights to the straw man? The United States. The United States and America is not the same place. Jamaica is America. Jamaica is not the United States. So they, they put in the paperwork, oh, we're going to allow you to travel without green cards and visa to go to America. You could already do that. But you're calling yourself African and everything that you are not. So because you're not going back on an each identity as uh, uh, um, what they now call you as, as Tianos and, and Arawaks, even even those names, because you're not even using those names. Now you're going to have now you have to pay to travel. Plain and simple. They let you pay to travel. So if you don't go back on an each your, your ancestral identity, you're going to be put as a straw man. And what that straw man. They set this shit up so fucking lovely. Uh, and I'm getting pissed because every when I, the more I talk, I'm understanding 1962 when they revamped the Constitution. They revamped the Constitution in 1962. That shit wasn't even fucking new. And what they put in there, they put you down as persons. P-E-R-S-O-N-S. -S. Persons meaning artificial entity, meaning a corporation. So they knew that they were going to sell you the people. They was going to sell yeah. the people to the United States Corporation. The United States was a corporation, became a corporation in 1871. Y'all hear me? There's a difference between the United States uh, of America Republic and the United States of America. The United States of America yeah, is a for, corporation. It's United States for America and yeah. then... Uh, of America. Of America. Thanks, sis. That's the right. United States for we America. Got, uh, we got Brother Damon with us too. Halito, brother Halito. Peace, brother. Halito, you can hear me? Yes, we can. Hello. Yes, we can. Oh, y'all can't. I, I ain't know y'all can hear me or not. You know, it's the first time I'm on this. Yeah, we can hear you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so, so much for joining us. I, no, I, 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 you know, I've been blocked and I know uh, we're busy and haven't been able to, uh, to, to kick it. But um, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we we're talking to the people in regards to uh, genealogy and consanguinity and the importance of why 
we have to uh, establish ourselves and, you know, um, how, how to be diligent with looking for their documents and, you know, not losing hope and little clever ways for them to be able to find sources, um, okay. you know, to for firsthand. Yeah. Also, um, I have a question. Um, I know that you homeschool, but there's a lot of my subscribers that are really interested in homeschool. Um, uh, tell us, I, I've, I've, I've spoken with your son and I know how intelligent he is and, um, you know, his royal demeanor and stuff like that. What, what are some of the things that, um, the parents need to know, um, of, about their fears of pulling their children out of school and being able to manage their time and allocate their time and what benefits do you see, um, since you homeschool versus, I mean, uh, when on they ever I, I, I think the big, the biggest thing is being able to um because you know my son he still goes to uh you know he, he's going basically to a charter school but his curriculum is at home so it's not like you know he's still you know enrolled in you know in regular school if he'd say say if some something was available that made sense and i wanted to send my son to you know to go take advantage of opportunity it would be available but but because I'm there to see what he's learning, I'm able to um, to control the narrative. Honestly, that's the biggest thing. Where I think when you're not in school with your children, you know, the, everything just becomes um, like copy and paste, regurgitated, and you just take everything for granted. But when you're right there and you're able to really see what they're learning step by step, you know, one, you're able to help them with a lot of problems that they have that the teacher themselves, they can't do. That's the first thing, you know, they split up a class of 30, things like that. You know, they don't have as much as you want them to do. It's not even as, as possible as, you know, it, it as possible as it could be. You know what I mean? Like, I worked in the regular school system for about seven years in New York, you know, and I see how it is that it's hard, you know, for... You know, we have a class 30, 30 students in there. And even if you're really trying to do everything you want to do, it takes a lot. You know, everybody can't do it. So the, the thing is, the school system, they're not necessarily even trying to, you know, be that, um, use that much discernment or take that much interest in the children themselves. They're just trying to run a business. So with that being said, everybody who's just coming in and out the doors, doing the revolving, um, the revolving door, they're not going to be able to do it. So um it's it's challenging for a lot of when you have a lot of kids but when it's your own child you know you know you know your ch your child you know what they think you know how they tick and it, it allows you to be able to catch things a lot sooner you know what i mean where a teacher won't be able to necessarily connect with you but beyond that controlling the narrative as far as our our story you know who we are I feel like it's a lot easier like it just happened today you know today they were telling him about rosa parks if I believe I want to record, that's what they were talking about. They start telling about Rosa Parks. And, you know, as the teacher in the class, she's basically reading the story about her. And the story, you know, I believe it had the term African American in the story. So at the end, you know, she goes on to describing what African American is. And, you know, we use the term African American. I know for you young kids, you probably don't understand what this means. You know, we're trying to make sure you understand. And she basically goes out and says, oh, well, these are people who, you know, they're, um, they're from Africa, you know, because they have dark skin and blah, blah, blah. Pretty much, more or less, that's what she said. And then I just was like, okay, you know, so he listened. And, you know, I've already had conversations with my son. My son don't understand the term black. He's like, who's black? Like, he's, looks up, so he says he's, he's brown. My youngest son, the other day, said he was light beige because he's just looking at his complexion. I'm just like, yo, these kids is, Kids, they don't go to one of those necessary terms that don't make sense to them. You know what I'm saying? So, um, with that being said, it was like he just, um, you know, he sat there and listened, and I just had the conversation with him right after that to say, well, um, you know, what does what would that mean to you? You know, what does that mean that she's saying that? She, Rosa Parks is um, African-American and that these people who look like that are African-American. Um, 
And he was like, it doesn't make sense to him necessarily, but he knows that I told him that they just use that word for people because they basically say somebody who's brown, they kind of just infer they're brown, they got curly hair, they want to infer that they're descended from Africa. Um, he knows that, and he's like, okay, that's part of it. But I wanted to kind of frame it to him in the same way that they're teaching him historically. So they said later on in the week, he has to read about, um, he has to watch a video about Frederick Douglass. And I'm like, okay, perfect. I go and I take the um, post that I had up that I put with the Frederick Douglass quote about him talking about um, the ACS and the, um, and them trying to set up in Liberia different colonization schemes they were doing on all the free people of color as they was calling them at that time out here. And I let him read that to understand that you know, see a picture of Frederick Douglass the whole night, so he, for him to understand, well, this is a person they call African-American, but this is a person who did not identify with Africa. He did not go and say, you know, he he had in the quotes there that I was reading basically saying how, you know, he he basically said the people that was doing colonization was like the sisters of um, slavery. So it's like basically knowing that they trying to do some type of, you know, skill to send them over to another place to have them in some type of bondage. So, um, being able to see that and show that to him where it made sense because he could see, okay, this is a historical figure they're going to teach me about. Um, and they might tell me this person is African American, but in this person's own time and this person's words, like he didn't identify as such, you know. Um, he identified as an American, he identified as a native to where he was from. He, he said, This is where we are, this is where we supposed to be, <laughs> you know, and in, in, uh, in as short as words as you can make it. So being able to just control those those moments, it makes the big difference. You know, um, I would love to be able to do more things curriculum-wise. You know, even when I work in different schools and different programs, I always try to, um, you know, interject as much real. You know, and I learned that from other teachers. You know, my mother's a teacher. My grandfather a teacher, you know, teacher principal. Um, so I got a background from those people who did it, but they also was – outside the lines too, you know, my mom was the type of teacher that she would, um, you know, she had parents calling her during the weekend, basically trying to get her kids in line and whatnot, you know what I'm saying? Because, get their kids in line because they wasn't able to manage their own kids. They'd be calling my mother on the weekend, my mother picking up the phone, like, you know, talking to their, talking to their children. So it was like, you know, I've seen a lot of that, you know, um, those type of teachers, but the system itself, they're not fostering those those individuals, you know, that, that system is not built for that. So if you really, you know, have an opportunity, it's not easy. Managing time is definitely the hard part. You know, me, it's a little easier because, you know, I got my, my wife, she's very, you know, um, hands-on and helping out. So we, you know, we work with each other. Um, but I mean, you know, we all got family and if everybody can find a way to kind of get together as a family, I think we all can, um, you know, make the time. So, you know, it's, it's definitely something I think people should look into, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Definitely. I appreciate that. No I appreciate no. that. That's a good word. I got one more thing. I need you to drop this science on real quick, D, because you know but a lot what? more about it than I do. I need you to drop this so, you know, people could get this little Disney image and shit out their mind. And um, again, I, I'm just so humbly thankful that you was able to join us today. Tell the folks about the Chinese and Japanese slave <laughs> trade and give the people a little bit of background on this mongoloid appearance and phenotype that a lot of the Mexicans and, you know, a lot of these other people have that, you know, may have some sort of disagreement or uh, or or malicious disposition in regards to our ancestry. That's in an opposition I mean, to us. Why don't you give us a little background on that slave trade that nobody talks about? One of the many slave trades no one talks about. I mean, it goes back as far as the colonization in this country. So, you know, as far as they talk about Europeans being here is pretty much the same time you might as well talk about Asians being here involved in being brought over here as workers, different um, type of um, laborers, you know, because ultimately that's what these people were, laborers, unfree labor and things of this sort. So, um, um, you know, 
it started, you know, you got the Portuguese with the Japanese bringing them over. You have the Chinese itself, you know, you have them with a, with the um, favored, what was the favored nation status they had. So since they had a favored nation status, they basically was in and out. <laughs> like the whole time, it was always in and out. And they were, you know, coming, of course, from the West Coast because that's where, you know, that's where the closest proximity for them to travel and, you know, into so many of those regions going into um into central america and then of course going into the middle of north america um so what's interesting about that is that you know of course they're coming and they're coming over here and themselves being laborers um some of them uh you know they have like some type of royal lineage prop you know going back into their home country but then they're bringing their own laborers who, are, again, they just have Negro status. You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that Negro, like what you look at a Negro to be. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I think most of y'all understand what I'm saying. So, yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like, that's that's what they're coming in as. Now, of course, they have complexion as well. There's complexion, things that's going on, but it's not that just that simple, you know? Um, they came in as a favorite nation, I guess, in a sense, just so that they could come in and do what they did, you know, to labor for the cheap and to, uh, to kind of just be like a hidden hand, you know, like an extra, um, you know, kind of like, kind of similar to when the Italians came in and the Irish is not too different. But they came in um, a lot. And what's it is that not too long ago, I was just looking at something tracking into like um, my Canon, you know, I got um, Canon family that I'm um, connected to from in South Carolina. And, you know, that's my background on my father's side. And looking into, you know, just the, the migrations that they were taking and, you know, knowing Canons, they reached over to California, of course, and they were pioneer, pioneering type of people that came from, you know, um, Carolina area and made it over there. So I was reading a narrative, um, and it was talking about, basically talking about when they were getting across in the middle of America, right? And these were, you know, quote, unquote, Negroes, like, you know, Indians, basically, that look like us, you know, American Negroes. So I, I just use that term because it's like, once I use that term, people know it, and I don't have to have, have African in it, so it's, it's just easy for people to always understand what I'm saying. Um, so the American Negroes, as they're going across, um, they, they're commenting how many Chinese that they see, they identify them as Chinese. Now, all of them might not even be from China. They're just various Asians, though, of course. But how many, like, they, that they were just seeing so many, almost like, talking, I guess, like, how you might, you know, you're going to see a group of them every time you see a fire hydrant in the city or something. I don't know. Like, it's like, or, you know what I'm saying? It was just, they were mentioning how often that it was occurring. So it let you know that, okay, this was, just like, you know, not something abnormal, you know, for these Asian um different various Asian people to be here. And again, as slaves, that's a whole another thing, you know, going into, you know, them being barbarians, um, being descendants of barbarians, you know what I'm saying? Because that whole Asia spun out of that, you know, out of that 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 kind of circumventing the um, Mediterranean <laughs> and a lot of swirling I guess you know that created the swirl that ultimately gave you what you even probably look at Asia as they, you know that's from my interpretation but it's kind of clear you know what I'm saying and these guys are one in one you know Germans real descendant of the you know of the Mongoloid you know the Hungarian is is Mongoloid so these guys that you look at as European aren't even just that Neva. So that that's a big part of also who you consider um as far as like a class thing and who was a slave, um, what their category, what the categoriz categorization was and what it is. Um all these different Asian people are another thing, you know, actually, because this is actually one of the most important things, especially relating it to Africa, um, is that, you know, even if you ever hear American Negro, anybody back in the time, them talking about, okay, they, they want to talk about that they saw, I'm part of they want to talk about Africa, they want to reference Africa. They're always referencing Africa in a biblical way. They're always talking about Ethiopia or something like that, because that's all they know about. Everything is 
you know, the information is coming from that paradigm. Um, all of that area, what they call in Africa now, but that's basically basically what Ethiopia going into, you know, what you're going to call, I guess, Persia and all this stuff. If you know anybody who's old enough, you know that this is all what they call Oriental. You know, this is Oriental. You know, that term was a ready term. It wasn't like a term that was just like, it wasn't an archaic, you know, it was a ready available term. Um, and these individuals who were Oriental and being called that kind of readily at the time, um, you know, they fought and they did, they did something to change that status of that um, for their benefit. You understand what I'm saying? Because it allows you to not be able to identify times when like last cars and, you know, other people who could be identified similarly to Negroes um, as well as these Berber types as well, you know what I'm saying? Um, it allowed them to not be classified as Oriental or, you know, even Moorish is very similar, <laughs> you know, when they say Moorish, they're kind of leaning right into that Oriental vibe. So, you know, people kind of got to understand that's what Africa really was. That's where, you know, they talk about Africa being a cradle of civilization. The civilization that they talk about didn't, Honestly, truly, they got to be honest, it didn't develop until they hit the Nile in the Mediterranean. So, you know what I'm saying? Like that, the civilization that they want to speak of. So they got to identify those people as that area being identifiable as Africa, not the area that they want to depict it now, you know, within the bush and all that stuff like that. Um, you know, European didn't encounter that till the late 1900s. That's according to their words. So, you know what I'm saying? I got to, you know what I'm saying? At least... At least hear that, and that tells me a lot. You know what I'm saying? The mid to late 1800s is they real dealing with interior Africa. So I don't know what else I could go off of, off of other than that, you know? But, but thank you so much. I do appreciate that. Yeah, but uh, a lot of people aren't aware of that big old giant uh, exchange of Asians coming in from the West. And, um, you know, a lot of people also don't understand the pictures that they see after, you know, the reconstruction pictures and the post antebellum pictures of uh, these Native Americans, um, they went in to ask for reservations. Mm -hmm. Okay, once they saw that the Choctaws, the you know, the five civilized tribes were uh, able to, uh, you know, establish themselves politically and also kick enough ass to where they were able to have uh, this, this system set up in order for them to be relocated because there were stipulations and people abused that and violated that too. Just like they violate the welfare system. There was things that they were doing that they wasn't supposed to do. So some of our people actually were uh, attached to them, but they got kicked out. And when they got kicked out and started abusing the program, all of this is going on as these people are still in our identity. That's true. You know? So uh, a lot of these things were happening simultaneously. So it's not um, just so much that everybody was a fraud because some of our family was absolutely enumerated within those censuses. That's absolutely correct. If people look up their family from Tulsa, Oklahoma, they don't shouldn't be surprised that if their chocolatey grandmother uh, is listed as white because that's what they call the Indians. They listed them legally as white. In Alabama, they wouldn't call them Indians, but they called them mulatto. Very rarely would they do that, especially after this so-called uh, Trail of Tears. Very few people were enumerated as Indians. Very few in the Confederate States. Very, very few. So, again, you know, as far as the genealogy, our people want to make sure that they are making it a group effort. Make sure you mention the names uh, to your children. Make sure you show them nostalgic things um, like record players and it's just little shit. So they were, they may have to rebuild something and use old, they wanna at least be able to identify 
these things. If they ever got to get MacGyver with some shit you got in the basement, they need to be able to know what a cassette player is. You know, maybe a transmitter or something like that. They need to see some of these things. Um, and they need to know uh, what was going on at the time. Might be helpful. For the library card is absolutely pertinent. Everybody's child, uh, child should have, you know, access to a library. Yep. Um, be able to see the responsibility of bringing back the books and stuff like that. That's still something that our children definitely need to experience. That time where you go in the library and it's completely quiet and you're reading and they're reading and that that starts really good habits uh, within them uh, in regards to you know being able to sit still in their attention span and also it uh, provides their imagination and them being able to be able to think freely and think on their own for themselves you know um and plus current events they don't have current events anymore see now everything is so uh digitalized to where you know everybody gets the news on their feed even children but there was just some things um that they need to be excluded from viewing um especially because people families work so hard and so long hours they don't really have time to explain to them about hoaxes and stuff and you know and even you know just crazy you know, kids that can potentially put them in danger and stuff like that. A lot of kids in New York City, especially them, they're, they're pretty much safe. They got armed police officers in a lot of these New York schools. So stuff like that, you don't really, you know, you know I don't see that happening in New York City. You know, like uh, it would be in a, you know, wouldn't be in a, that's for sure, you know, things like that. I don't see a mass shooting happening in a New York school because folks in the hood is not trying to ha have that shit and go with that dumbass false flag narrative. This is why yeah. a lot of these shootings only happen in majority of Caucasian based um, schools because they quick to lie like motherfuckers. They quick to fucking lie. They, they're, they're quick to be the ones to, to sign up to be the crisis actors and all that shit because it's that deception. They know what's going on. They can't do that in our schools because then we will catch get get um privy to what's going on. Then we will start asking questions. You see what I'm saying? So the whole structure of the system is not to fool their people more so, but to fool us. You see what I'm saying? To put their people in so much of a panic that their people vote to take away certain rights and this and that. Mm -hmm. Not knowing, but we not knowing that we don't fall underneath that order. That only goes for their people, but because we continue on with the titles as citizens and whatever it is that they labeled us as, we carry on those titles, then it goes for us because we haven't corrected that all that 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 issue with our title. You see what I'm saying? So all this false flag stuff is just to is just to work their way up to imprisoning us even more. That's what it's, that's what it's really about. That's what it's really for. Hence, you see them gentrifying the major cities like crazy. Because now you're a city person. What do you know about farming? You don't know shit. What do you That's know about true. purifying water? You don't know shit. So when you go out there in the country that they have the KKK and the neo-Nazis and all these, these hate groups set up at waiting for your ass, these militias, what are you going to do? You, you see what I'm saying? So... I mean, yeah, but I ain't cut you, but definitely I think with that being said, and I know it's hard because that's something I do. You know, I'm dealing with myself. You know, I'm definitely a native New Yorker, you know, born and raised like you know in Harlem. But you know, my family, all they all every you know, I guess they well, how would I have to do right? Like every all my great grandparents, they all in South Carolina. So mm -hmm. all my lives basically coming out of there. Um, most of my grandparents, they was all um coming from there except for. My um my grandfather on my mother's side, but you know like that that same generation from the eighties that was in Harlem, you know sixties seventies, you know those those people are the same people that you know raised me. And of course, so I'm I'm a city boy. You know I've been up back back and forth to the south. You know going to visit family reunion, you know funerals, things like that. But it wasn't something that was in me. You know I was definitely you know. Um, more used to living that, you know, that uh, city lifestyle. Definitely not aware of the things that, just like you said. Mm -hmm. But now I live out in, um, I live in Darlington, um, South Carolina, and that's where my family on my dad's side is from. And because of that, I'm 
I'm able to see exactly what you're talking about. And I feel like it's something though that definitely more of us would definitely need to connect with. But I also know that it's just not something that you could take for granted that people gonna do. Cause I got family that could do the same thing. You know, I got a situation where, you know, my family, they, you know, my elders that was here, they, they was fortunate. They, they, they did a fortunate thing for us where they took advantage and actually acquired land. And, you know, they had, you know, as far as I could track on, on record, at least for 200 years, you know, this land um, that they had ownership of and, you know, who knows what the situation was before that because I haven't been able to fully um, track that. But because of that, you know, that's something that us as a family have been able to maintain. But generation after generation, it's like less and less people are attached to that area. And me coming back, you know, that was something that, you know, my was put into me because they put the bubble to my ear and that's really what made it happen. You know, it wasn't something I, a decision I made on my own. But I think that it's something we should definitely encourage each other to do, I think, because there's a lot of opportunities that people are taking advantage of. You know, I heard, she was earlier, I heard you talking about how the, the Arabs and the East Indians and everything. Without question, if you don't understand that that's happening, that's happening. You know, you look at South Carolina and who's in the, um, representing in the UN, the, you know, former governor of South Carolina, and she's of East Indian descent. So it's a perfect way for you to see that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That these people be very much, um, paving away, you know what I'm saying? And they make sure that they they get what they want. So we have to be thinking of like minded. But unfortunately, it's like we're trying to be too inclusive, trying to just like not really necessarily um be aware of our interests. You know what I'm saying? It's okay because you gotta do business, but you gotta be inclusive to do business. But you definitely get, just gotta know your interests. You know what I'm okay. saying? If you don't know your interests, you can't know what you're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you what's gonna start happening. Matter of fact, let's go back to this. When I, when I was growing up in Brooklyn, right, I, I always saw there was this Chinese restaurant. Actually, there was two Chinese restaurants in two blocks. And matter of fact, three. The could a fish shop that also cooked like little fried shit also was owned by the Chinese. So they had three Chinese spots, food spots, in two blocks, right? <laughs> and each and every single one of them that you went into after a while, it was a different face. And then a couple months will pass again, it's a different face. And then probably a year or so will pass again, it's a different face, but it's always Chinese. You've never seen that. And they never hired nobody from the community. Nobody. Mm -hmm. It was always their children behind that counter racking mm -hmm. up on that mm -hmm. uh, on that calculator, tallying up your change and all that shit for you. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when you go back and you look back at then till now, they've been making that transition for years of pulling in one behind the other pulling in one behind the other. This is the new form of warfare. While they have us distracted on the Middle East and the bombings and so and so that's going on over there, they're already um doing their 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 core of attack on us over here. They already mm -hmm. been implementing this system, this structure that they have and they that they mapped out really well. Well, we get one to come in over here and then the, that one is going to pull every other member in of the of the tribe. Of the clan because they go by clans of the clan right. boom 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 they're going to come through by the time we know it, we're going to see chinatown again all over the damn place and we're going to see all these chinese chinese it's more and more chinese police officers than any than, than ever before every time i turn around i see one. some of them can't even speak english <laughs> and they on the fucking police force you know what i mean i was watching a youtube video of one saying no no you 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 wrong no no that's how he talking <laughs> so he, he can hardly speak english and he's trying to give somebody a ticket. And nah, that's show, cool. Again, this is going back to they're recolonizing over here, but they're no longer using the European, what we call the European um look. They're using now their brothers, their Asian brothers. They're using their Arab brothers. These are, these are who they're using to come now and colonize over here. While, again, even when we are being sent down south, all right, some of the, some of the folks down south have lost... um um attachment to the land why is mm -hmm. that you have again we got to pay attention to the music industry who operates the music industry the Ashkenazi jew they run that shit. Yeah. what does the Ashkenazi jew do cuts back on all the all, all the artists that could awaken the minds of folks and show the ones that only care about materialistic things so you mm -hmm. know you have folks like uh, um gucci main and all these other down south artists that only shows 
and rap about jewelry, fancy mm. houses and cars, folks mm. ain't gonna want to sit back and want to go do no farming on their land and want to go have a garden on their land. They're not gonna want that. They're gonna want the maid and the butlers and whoever to go work the yard for them. That's well, it's crazy. You know, it's crazy. But what's crazy is they still they want to put chains on though to do that. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You got to think about that part. They like try to get out of chains, but they going to put chains on. So it don't make no sense. Like, I dig it. And trust me, I get what you're saying 100% because that's 100% the facts. You know what I'm saying? Because it really did come out the South like that. What's, what's deep is you mentioned that, when you said that, it made me think of something like, because, you know, you talk about South, Southern uh, hip hop. I think, honestly, like, probably get slightly slept on, but anybody, if you mention it, of course, everybody want to recognize, and that better definitely be Outkast, right? Like, Outkast was that group that kind of just took East, I mean, took, like, took, it captivated, maybe right after Ghetto, um, after, um, Ghetto Boys, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? But with Outkast, I remember watching them say how when they did their style for, um, Southern Playlistic video, I think it was, they were saying how, they had Puffy, like, was influencing them and shit like that. So it's like, what you notice is, like, you see those connections. But, like, motherfucking from the North and Jewish, you know, handler and, you know what I'm saying, coming down, um, kind of, like, trying to do the, um, you know, basically play the last swap on, uh, you know what I'm saying, on, uh, you know, Aboriginal from the South, you know what I'm saying? And Puffy would probably want to do that because that's a motherfucker who claimed me from Harlem and he ain't do a goddamn thing to <laughs> put his name up in Harlem and motherfuckers buying that shit up left and right. So that don't make no sense to me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you, you know, um, what folks also have to realize and understand is this. All right, let's let's go to the Gullah Geechee, right? You see, right now the Gullah Geechee, they they had about seventy percent of their land already taken away from them. You know what I'm and, and the reason being because the reason why that is going on is because when the older generation were dying, they left the land to the younger generation, and a lot of the younger generation. Don't even live down there. <laughs> they live in the big cities. So because mm -hmm. they live in the big cities, they hear, oh, word, we got land. First thing, like Negroes do, oh, we got to sell this shit. We'll make, some, <laughs> make a quick buck off of this shit. And the mm -hmm. Jew comes and buy it for like $10,000. And the Jew just built up a whole bunch of condominiums on there. That's going for damn near a million dollars. You see what I'm So it's like we don't understand yes, business or even value or the value of land that as long as you own the land, as long as you have the land, that everybody and their mother have to come to you to do business also to, with you. Don't mm -hmm. ever sell your land. This is why our ancestors never sold the land. They mm -hmm. leased the land. Mm -hmm. And folks don't mm -hmm. understand that because you have folks out there telling folks to invest, invest in Chinese companies and businesses. No, go get the land and they will come to you. And we have to come together as a unit and say we're not selling our land, but we will lease it to you. Yeah, indeed. you understand? If people really want to make a profit or whatever they want to go off of these fiat dollars or 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 or, or so and so like that, you see what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. we will lease you the land for X amount of time, so and so. And we have to make sure we don't do like what our ancestors did and take the foot up off their necks. We got to keep the foot on their necks to make sure that. They don't all uh, um, try to take advantage of our children, our yes. uh, uh, mm -hmm. our children's children, and make sure that we teach each generation like, yo, this is what we're going to have to do. We got a set of rules and guidelines. If they ever try to step out of it, we got to knock them back in their place or get them up 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 out of here by any means of how we got to do That's it. Right. Got to go mm -hmm. home. You got to wipe your feet yep. on the welcome mat or take your ass back home. Go back <laughs> to the door and try to shit again. No Come back nicer. Talk to yep. me nice. Yep. Talk to the Aborigine nice. Cause we forgot how to, <laughs> you know, how to, you know, treat their hosts, their mm -hmm. gracious hosts that ain't wearing out of shit to provide. Exactly. You know. Yeah. So absolutely, I see. Uh, that's right. Uh, Chad saying embrace racism. That's right. There's nothing wrong with it. That's your stock, your antecedents. That is absolutely who you want to be down with. Your own folks. You want to be down yeah, with your folks. Your folks yeah, once you know who they are, that makes it easy, basically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. to be a race to, to really be a racist is to love oneself and one's home and culture. That's mm -hmm. why a Caucasian person would tell you that they are racist. They don't hide that. There's a big difference between a being a racist and a bigot. You see what I'm saying? A bigot mm -hmm. is just someone that just hates other people 
based on color of skin. It don't got to be color of skin. Just by even if a person is wearing something that they don't like or if a person has something that they can't have and just hateful, period. This one hateful yeah. person, that's a bigot. You see what I'm saying? So there's a they, so so for folks out there, there is a big difference. And for over the years, again, they've been pushing that propaganda of racist. Oh, you're a racist. You're a racist. You're a racist. <laughs> Every ethnic group, what they call ethnic group, is racist. The Mexicans look out for the Mexicans. The Asians look out for the Asians. The Caucasians look out for the Caucasians, and they all come together to make sure that your ass, the American Aborigine, is blindsided every single time. I mean, also, I think, yeah, I, I think race, racism is like also it's a boogeyman word to the extent that okay, we live in a system where no matter what you do, you fill out any application, you send your son to school, you know, you go in to get a job, you do the census, you, just, you know, the police, you know, they need to kill you, you call the police, you want to kill somebody, you know, as your own they what they raise, you want to come out saying it was white, it was black. So, you condition this is the system that we're in, you know, we live in um, capitalist. Economic system, they practice capitalism. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the racist society is already built around that. So, every individual that's coming out of that system, they're automatically going to be like that. The only people who not generally who not are people who like again, you said who get deceived, they kind of get the word is like a boogeyman to them. So, they don't understand it's a system, and you got to operate within the system. If you're gonna, if you, that's what you're actually doing, you know what I'm saying? You have to actually play the, by the rules of the game. You know, you play basketball, you can't start trying to do football shit in there, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's like, um, you know, when people understand that, then they understand that's how that works. So race, race being a racist, if you operate in this racist system, then you're gonna have to use racism in some shape, form, or fashion. You know what I'm saying? Most people yeah. have it used against them as opposed to them using it, you know what I'm saying? For yeah. any benefit of themselves. You know, an another thing is to folks out there that you, you guys have to look out for. You want to know who these dudes are that got their handlers, right? Well, especially within our community, who are these folks with the handlers? They're not hard to miss, y'all. Or who are the folks who are in cahoots with each other? For years, you have organizations say, screw the white man, screw the white man. The white man is the devil. But next minute, you know, you see them parading on stage during the Million Man March with all sorts of Chinese and Caucasian men saying that's their brother. That's again, that's that African unity with these folks. Mm -hmm. And then the, the what we call the coons that sold out because they took that oath to sell their people out. They took that oath on that bended knee to a man mm -hmm. to sell us out. And they came into unity. With that, you're going to see even even you have more is even talking about monkeys this and monkeys that. But what do you see in they in they mock trial and stuff like that that they do behind closed doors when they do leak it? You see a lot of Asians and Caucasians sitting in that mock courtroom with the Ooh. same moors that keep telling you that this is Morocco and all that <laughs> dumb shit. You understand? Because again, this is the unity. That's their unification. That is them. That is the, the, the that 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 group that have come together to take what you have. That's why you see Moors running around with feathers on their head. Talk about their Moors and their indigenous Aborigines at the same time. You got to pick one. Because <laughs> if you're going to call yourself a Moor, we know what that word means. And it means nothing good for anyone that's even claiming indigenous or Aborigine. It takes it literally right. takes you away from everything that is yours. Right. So this is the trickery that's going on. Do you have folks out there that got Arabs running their live streams? You understand? These are the ones <laughs> with handlers. Now, I don't think I even need to even call no name. Y'all already know. You know what I mean? They Both of them, both of them got Arabs running their live streams. Actually, that whole, that whole black conscious community, it's an Arab running all those Negroes live streams. And getting PC off of what they're making off their lives. You understand? That's their no handler. No doubt. These are the slave, the slaves that they put out there on the front line using them. That's their handlers. And some of, some of them are our most young, intelligent minds, but they're using that intelligence to, 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 to take you away from who you are. They're using that intelligence to ma manipulate you and the information because they're very savvy with their words or they're very fast with their mind of how they make sure that the wording comes out as well. 
So, you know, we have to, this is how you're going to have to start identifying these dudes. Again, if dudes was talking about American Aborigine last month and this month they're chiefs and they're wearing headdresses, y'all got to watch out for them. Thanks. You understand? That means they're just trying to sell you something and take some shit from you. So this is how you, you, you we're going to start have to identify these folks. Again, we're going to have to clean up our community before we could clean up anywhere else. Because until we start putting these people on blast and letting everyone know who they are, and what they are about, then you know what? It, I, I, we 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 gonna be enslaved for another thousand years. Not even we, but those who are still blind are gonna be enslaved for another thousand years, going through the motions again, hardcore, and still gotta come out with 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 Dobermans and shit like that, ripping away at you like they were doing Dr. King uh, uh, and Selman, all that. Mm -hmm. So we we have to decide what do we want to do? Uh, is it because we consider this person a friend and we know this person is literally screwing our people over, but because that person is your friend and you consider that person a brother, you're just going to sit back and continue to watch them do so for their own personal benefit. But at the end of the day, what they're doing for their own personal benefit is damaging hundreds of thousands of others, keeping hundreds of thousands, millions blind because these motherfuckers platforms reach millions of people this is why a lot of them started hiding um how much uh, um subscribers they have now because some of these motherfuckers got over seven hundred thousand subscribers you understand so they pushing out videos every day they got six seven different platforms running y'all hear me so not only are they making money off of these six seven different platforms off the uh, uh um they monetization Right, y'all are donating to their GoFundMe's, to their on um, Patreon, to their PayPal's, to all these things, and then y'all paying for their live streams as well, and then they feeding you false information at that, so they are sucky buses, sucking you dry at all angle. Why? Because they took that oath, and because they are just selling you out, and because they have handlers, and we have to start putting them on blast. You understand? This is why. The one of the female rulers of Rome had put a law against masonry, and that law still stands. This is why they also claim to be a secret, but not so secret society, because it's, it's illegal. It's illegal. Anything with the term fraternal order, they're masons. It's masonically linked. No doubt. You know? So we just we we gotta we gotta open up our eyes, man. You know, we gotta we we have to start saying, look, what's more important here? The survival of our people or or me me being cool to my homeboy, knowing that he's scamming the people and still and still be like, nah, nah, nah. He's a good dude though. He's a good dude. Nah, nah, it's all love. Nah, no, Negro. You scam the people for over a million dollars. It ain't all love. You ain't my brother. You're not a good dude. You understand? And that's just mm -hmm. what it is. I ain't gonna sit here and, and, and play this game back and forth here when that million, that two million, Umar said, I got 700,000 in my bank account. That's what Umar said. And, and, and folks is, and, and folks still just sat back and still kept donating to his GoFundMe. That's the funny <laughs> part. And he told y'all he got 700,000 in his bank account, his personal <laughs> bank account. You understand? That's like saying personal GoFundMe. <laughs> So the money's not going to the cause. The money's going to him personally. It's not for the cause. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Yo, that's also do money. How y'all doing? Peace. Peace. Come on. Yo, hello? Yeah, that monthly dues. The monthly dues. That's right. Yo, all them, all them, all them, all them Masonic, fraternity, sorority people. They gotta pay their dues to their masters. Yep, that monthly you know dues. Yep. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't know about that. Um, you know, one of the members, one of the members of the African American Africans a couple months ago posted this old book. Um, I think it came out of the, the um the early 1900s where it um it listed all of the um all of the Masonic societies um pretty much known throughout the United States. And um, a lot of the quote unquote black um, fraternities is listed in there. You know, yeah. um, I don't remember the name of the book, but um, it's it's the information's all out here, as well as the information on the history of the Moors. Um, and that's that's something that's really interesting. Is you know, 
these people are so deceptive um, within within their own factions. You know, um, the the Europeans who they who they have pledged their vassal loyalty to, they pretty much have no love for these people, and um, That's right. they, they, they 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 should really be embarrassed. But um, you know, um, I appreciate I appreciate this conversation. Um, I just jumped on Phoenix shot me the invite. You know, so um, I'm gonna listen and um, you know, yeah, much appreciation, right. y'all. No doubt. Yeah, because I, it's Tomahawk Tony, everybody. Uh, oh, true. You already know that's that's the that's the homie right there. I I I I've seen I've seen these dudes pay they big sonic dudes. You see know what I'm saying? This ain't uh -huh. no if ands or buts. You know what I mean? So as a person that even been inside of some of their temples and shit, you know, when they cause if you're cool with one, they'll invite you to their parties and stuff. You know what I mean? They 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 family gatherings and get togethers and they show you how they walk down the aisles and all that shit, doing their little ceremonies when they giving each other the, their plaques and all that stuff. So I, I've seen a lot of the stuff. I've seen Masonic brothers fight each other over dues. I've seen folks get their doors knocked on because they sent other dudes that don't play that to knock on their door to collect the dues. You understand? <laughs> I seen brothers that got their, their, their tattoos and stuff cut off their skin with that Masonic sword. This shit is not a game. People think people out there thinking that this shit is a game. This shit is serious. They no take this very seriously, and they will sacrifice you or anybody, even if it's their own blood, even if it's their own child. You understand? And let me let you let's touch on that too. Cause there's many ways to do a sacrifice. You have folks that if they have they firstborn, they will abandon their child rather than kill their child. You understand? They'll abandon their firstborn. They will do that, or they'll try to pimp out their firstborn as well. So these are other ways of how they also pay those dues as well. So, you know, this is very serious. When you see these folks only praise only nothing but the money, like y'all seen Polite on his knees praying to the money on the bed, that's because a lot of that is going back to the lodge. Mm -hmm. And you know who's and that's going in a Caucasian dude's pocket at the end of the day. It's called when you see some of them come out of nowhere, like Jay Z and them come out of come, come came from the streets and they started getting all these millions and millions and hundreds of millions of dollars to run it through their hands. Run, notice I said run it through because it don't stay in their pocket, it runs <laughs> straight through. But that's called tapping bank. That's when they hit up motherfuckers like the Rothschilds and so on and so and they tap bank. And anything that when they turn around and say, Yo, this is what I need you to do. I need you to keep Kanye mouth shut. I need you to bring him here so we can lob lobotomize his ass or whatever the hell we got to do. And I need you to keep him on the check. They got to do it. Oh, now we need your firstborn daughter. He got to do it. But he's not going to sacrifice his firstborn. So what is he going to do? He's going to get one of the new or upcoming artists or take an artist out of prison. And next minute, you know, you hear something happen to that artist. You see what I'm saying? So this is what it is that they're doing to us within our communities. We don't know yeah. it. This is why these dudes go so hard on them street corners as well. Them Hebrews, that whole HOK, all of that. They're part of that hidden hand. They know the secret. They know all of that. But they took an oath to sell us that out. Hidden hand, that hidden hand going to have to get the pimp smack. Back hand. <laughs> the chocolate side. The melanin side. We ain't dealing with none of that shit. These oppressors, they got to go somewhere. They can go, you know, yeah. Take rocks, take like, a long walk off a short period. I'm not even tripping. You know, they better stick the fuck out my way too, just like the rest of them, other foreigners, because them motherfuckers is foreigners to me. You know? And um what they don't know is that, you know, what they can't do is anything about these records. And that's that's exactly. that's where the power is. Yep. Power is in these records. Um, even with all their flaws and mistakes that they've made, the history's there. These uh, congressional records, uh, you know, the historical um, content of these wars and who these wars were actually with, um, the casualties involved and the treaties that were established as a result. Got to get down to the bottom of it. You have no idea who your people are. And it's very important that you... You know, you stay focused because once you know who your people are, you know who your fucking folks ain't. You know who they're not. And those are the ones you want to stay away from because those are the ones that have contributed greatly to your oppression. Yep. Um, so that you want to make sure that you find some way to, you know, fit it in. Some people, you know, like to um, 
do things at a particular time, make sure you take, you know, a device, you take your phone with you pretty much everywhere you go now, even in the back. Start looking through the archives, start digging. Anytime you got a little bit of downtime, write down where you left mm -hmm. off. You know, people are busy and sometimes you could be forgetful and stuff. Write down where you left off. So now when you uh, refresh your mind and you go back to the documents after a couple of days or something, you know exactly where you left off. And, you know, you can kind of just keep going yeah. instead of having to backtrack a little bit again. You want to make sure you're organized. Nope. Um, with the documents. You can always get the certified copies through the county agencies once you obtain, you know, what you can get from Ancestry.com. Some cases you may have to contact the Mormons for documents that seem um, that, you know, you can't get a straight answer. Now, the family link places, the libraries will always, uh, if you have a library card, you are able to pull up every document from every country. doesn't matter where it's from, how old it is, if it was written, if you were enumerated, if your folks were, uh, you know, they will they will absolutely have that. And those are where you will find more of the church records. You have more access to the church records because of the way that they itemize the documents. So you will see that, you know, such and such poor monkey married such and such top and I will absolutely see that, you know, um, that's where you get most of it. You got to look inside of the Quaker minutes, look at the missionaries, you know, within their meetings, they're saying, oh, we baptize uh, Molly, uh, uh, full blood, whatever, uh, Sharon Haka, Nahaka, you know, or, or full blood Saponi, they'll tell you within those texts. So you have to just follow, <clears throat> follow the ancestors, and they're gonna bring you right to it. You know, um, like I said, you get so many places to look in, so many places you want to definitely go through the county, go through the courthouse, see if they were ever in prisons. You know. Um, uh, the Social Security, if they uh, live past the 1930s, they had to apply for a Social Security number. So you will see who their parents were. They may even show you all of their aliases. They may even uh, show you if they had more than one spouse and who a surviving child may be. Uh, the military records, too, tell you native born, right? Uh, even if it says they will, it'll tell you native born. And it also tells you when they're African, too. They will write that in. That is an absolute fact. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, and then you still want to make sure you know what the laws are pertinent to the location of your folks. What were the laws at the time? What happened? If there was a war right there where they was at, and you see them 10 years later and they move somewhere else, you know they had to move because it was live fucking warfare going on, right? They had bows and arrows and, you know, it, it was a long time before they had muskets and bayonets and shit. It wasn't the ones with the, the, the link for the gunpowder, you know? They didn't have Asians came up with that. So, again, that also got enemies are and who's, uh, you know, who's hurt us and who's injured us in, in, in more than one way. That's also uh, of, you know, redress of grievances regarding uh, things that were inj injurious to us. You know, so again, grab your documents, check out the history of the counties, the cities, when were they established, um, the churches, the schools that were built. What kind of neighbors did they have? If they event around a bunch of uh, white people during segregation, okay, um, that 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 wasn't normal. If you see them before the uh, in eighteen sixties, then they they clearly weren't slaves, right? Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you, you you look for all these instances. Look for manumission records. Um, because at one point or another, they locked all the Indians up that they, they could. Um, so, and they lumped them in the pool with everyone else. So that was in captivity. So you still can go back, certain states labeled them certain things and they kept it the same. So you'll be able to see, um, how they established their little, you know, blood quantum. And, um, certainly I'm going to drop the links for, uh, Mrs. Shoe, Shoemate. 
just check out how the BIA or the Department of the Interior questioned her and how she may have been confused um, with the way that he was speaking with her and um, the, you know, the interrogation. It was pretty basic. It wasn't anything that I don't think any of us wouldn't be able to uh, because of their circumstances and them not having the, the oral history, they weren't able, she wasn't able to convey. And definitely she didn't have the language <clears throat> that was very huge. She didn't have the language. And there was a lot of chunks of history of her father's history that was uh, she was missing. Also, there was a point in time where I, she was a slave at one point and so her mother was free but for some reason she became enslaved and she married a former slave from i believe south carolina um so i don't know how that you know killed the indian in her you know but she got rejected so i want you guys to check that out just look at the dialogue and maybe check out some of the other cases so you see how people didn't know how to communicate and it was to their detriment and they were supposed to get. Um, and that's uh, 1901, 1902 or something like that. So when you see her answer questions and say, well, I didn't have the money to be able to travel over there. Now that gives you a better perspective knowing why they weren't able to, you know, yeah. uh, to where they needed to go. If they tell you, you got to have, you know, ten thousand dollars in order to get a hundred million dollars. Ten thousand dollars, right? Yeah. So that's kind of how that went. But I want to thank everybody for um, joining me, uh, the beloved brothers, the chiefs, and kings of the nations of the new school. I respect you guys. I thank you so much for holding me down. I felt real safe no in the world just now. No you know, um, no doubt. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining me. And hopefully soon. This was Definitely. a dope forum and I appreciate you all. Everybody in the chat, I love you guys. You guys, Chihulu Lee. Thank you so much. Yako K. Yako K, beloveds. Y'all have a good night. We're going to wrap this up. Peace and love. Thank you, Tomahawk, very much. Yo, much um, appreciation to you. Y'all be good. Appreciate you. Thank you so much.